Hello and welcome to Mr. Pineapple's Wonder Hour, the show where we talk big pineapples, small pineapples, hairy pineapples, and everything in between. I'm your host, Tony the Pony, and with me as always is the one and only, the incredible, Mr. Pineapple. How are you, Mr. Pineapple? Yeah, I'm alright, mate. Yeah, you, you good? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, good. Bit, a bit annoyed at you, but... A bit annoyed at me, why? Yeah, for calling me in the final of the game, it's fine. Oh, right, that game that you won. Yeah, I had to do another episode to win. Yeah, you did, didn't you? Yeah. Well, we've got a guest this, this, uh, this episode, haven't we? We do, we do, yes. We have got with us the one and only Paul W.S. Anderson. That's, That's right. me. That's me. I directed all of those movies. <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely me, not somebody else. How's how's the wife? M- Mila Djokovic. Yeah. Yeah, she's uh she's doing she's doing Monster Hunter, I think. Yeah. She is. Yeah. I think she I'm is. am I directing that? I don't, yeah, I don't you, know. You, but, you're yeah. doing a wonderful job of directing it, yeah. Oh, awesome. Thanks. I forget things. It's sadly <laughs> been delayed though until next year. What are your, oh. what are your thoughts on that? <laughs> I heard about that. I mean, I've, you know, my job as director's done. I've told people where to go. <laughs> <laughs> well, as with all our guests, we have three questions. Don't know if you know about this. If I you've know. ever listened to a podcast, Mr. W. S. Anderson. I have listened to a guestless podcast, so I am completely in the dark now. Oh, boy. Well, I'll start with questions off. The first question. What is your favourite all-time film? Favourite all-time film? All-time oh, favourite film. <laughs> all-time favourite film. <laughs> Now, oh, that's a difficult question. If if you were to ask me many years ago, I would have said Josh Have Redemption because you know uh, it's the classic. Um, but, but the more recent me, the more sort of matured me, uh, would probably go with still Josh Have Redemption. Yeah, yeah, it hasn't changed. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah, yeah. Good old Tom Hanks. That, that's Green Mile. Oh, yeah. Another <laughs> Stephen King book. <laughs> You've numped him, mate. <laughs> I mean, yeah. same director as well, but... Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Both set in a prison. Yeah, yeah, the two highest know. grossing prison movies. Uh, both short stories by Stephen King. Mm. Not even horrors. Well, maybe he should just die. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> He's so good at writing prison movies, we'll just have to kill him. <laughs> Mr. Pineapple, do you want to take the second question? Uh, yes. Uh, what would be your final meal on death row? My final meal on death Fitting. Fitting that we talked about Green Mile just then as well. Um, <laughs> my final meal on death row. And uh, a beverage at the side as well. A beverage at the is, side. You know, it's your last day in it. I'd, I'd honestly, I'd probably have a McDonald's just for the lols. Like, because people get this extravagant lobster and caviar and crap like that. Or I think there's actually a list that you can pick from. I don't think you can get whatever you want. But I'd probably get a McDonald's and a strawberry milk shake if the machine's working although Ooh. knowing my luck moments before i'm executed the machine will break <laughs> i won't get a strawberry milk shake but hopefully they'll have delayed execution so i can get that nice yeah and mcdonald's the final question out of every cartoon character in the world oh that's a lot who would you like to fuck wow um wow okay um uh <sighs> Probably. Uh, is it Jessica Rabbit from Who Framed Roger Rabbit? Nice. Yeah. yeah. That's a, that's a favourite on the pod. Of is course it? it is. Why wouldn't it be? That and the other rabbit from uh, Space. Lola, 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 Lola Bunny. Lola. Yeah. I wouldn't want to get in the way of fucking Bugs, though. He's terrifying. <laughs> he messes up Elmer Fudd like, <laughs> like, like gruesomely. <laughs> Maybe we need to change that question up because it's just getting the same same answer every time, isn't it? Same Not sane funny. answer. Mm. I should say apart from... <laughs> Jessica Rabbit. Yeah. But yeah, shall we get on to the hairy pineapples? The hairy pineapple I haven't planned. Oh boy. Let's oh. Superman. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Let's yep. talk about Superman. Oh, okay. Let's talk about Superman. An area. From what I know, Paul likes Superman. I am a fan. Uh shall we talk what's the what's your favourite um film of the Superman series? Uh it's probably from the DC animated universe. Um, probably Justice League Doom. I think would probably be my favourite of them. I think the DC animated universe is really, really good. Whereas Marvel own the cinematic. I believe DC own the animated. Yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. <laughs> Was that no, your um, only question? <laughs> I like. I've not seen uh, any of the animated DC stuff. I don't think off the top of my head. I'm more. Of, I've only seen like the live action Superman's. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. You know. Um, who is your favourite Superman? Uh, what like my favourite alternate version of him? Or no, ca- casting wise, like Christopher. Reeve. Oh, oh, right, okay. Um, Henry Cavill. I think he was really, really, really good. Yeah, yeah. I think the movies weren't handled greatly, but I think that he is uh, is the right age. He's got the right square jaw and yeah. the sort of physique for it. I think he did really well. Um, yeah, just a bit. The movies didn't do as <laughs> well. Yeah, he ain't got the right mustache though, has he? Mm. Oh. Oh, he had the right mustache in Mission Impossible. Oh, he did. Where he reloaded his biceps, (laughs) (laughs) which was action gold. (laughs) I might add. We're big fans of Fallout uh, on this podcast. It's a great. It is. It was awesome. What about you, Pony Boy? What's your favorite Superman film? What's my favorite Superman film? Yeah, and why is Mm. it Superman Two? It's Superman Two because it's got. Christopher Reeves and yeah <laughs> I don't know I didn't really like Man of Steel see I liked Man of Steel but every subsequent DC film that they've made has been a bit shit for me except from um, Shazam and Wonder Woman I'll Shazam say- was good Wonder Woman was good. Batman v Superman. No. <laughs> the fight scenes, though, I will not. I will not poo-poo those because they were sick. Like it's they the one, were the one with the warehouse. Oh, that was that was right. gold. That's, that was that's, that's good shit. That is you know. starts flipping boxes at people and just smashing their heads into the wall. Just but going postal Batman doesn't kill people. It's the Frank Miller Batman, isn't it? He's uh, way more violent. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. Way more unhinged. He doesn't really abide by the no killing rule. We need more violence in uh, comic book films. I think. Yeah, definitely. You know, fuck, fuck kids. Oh, you know, oh, I was well. <laughs> Not allowed to shout that, mate. Yeah, I am. <laughs> The kid. I um, think um, Kickass sort of started that off. Yeah, yeah. With the sort of more R-rated comic book movies. I know there's been Blade we, in the past and stuff. Yeah, but, yeah. Blade's off. Awesome. Uh, I think Blade was that sort of demographic, whereas Kickass was sort of like it was colourful, but it had like yeah. brutal mm. undertones to it. There's very, there's a lot of violence in that film. For a child. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hit, that yeah, hit girl scene, which just yeah. wrecks through the uh, uh, the hallway, which was actually a small um, Asian man who body doubled her for that scene. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the more you know. I think it was like four foot something or other like that, and he just body doubled Hit Girl for that scene. That's crazy. Yeah, I know, right? I really forgot to plan this. <laughs> 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 what about Lex, Lex Luthor? You know, who's your favourite? <laughs> <laughs> is, is it Kevin Spacey? No, it's not Kevin Spacey. He touches people. <laughs> <laughs> um, my favourite Lex Luthor, I can't remember who's voiced by, but it was from the, um, not the animated movies, but the original Justice League series that yeah. came out on Cartoon. To network. Um, I think he was a brilliant Lex Luthor. Oh no, no, no! Michael Rosenbaum from um, Smallville. Uh, from Smallville, yeah, who voiced the Flash in the animated series. We're just all sticking the fingers in DC characters, aren't we? <laughs> yeah, they are. But he was a brilliant Lex Luthor, and I think he bowed out of the series at the right time as well when it started going north or south. South when stuff so bad. South. Yeah. <laughs> it just went so far north, it ended up south again. And we can all agree that Jesse Eisenberg is shit. Yeah, I don't know what was going on there i yeah. have no idea i don't think jesse eisenberg is a bad actor i just think that that went it did it, it was weird like yeah, when he puts that big yeah. like like sweet in his that guy's mouth and it was meant to be sort of like a power play and i was like this is just unsettling like not in the way that you're intending either it's just weird granny's peach tea yeah shout out to gene ackman as well just for being a fucking boss <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah definitely yeah you know. wore a hairpiece and uh started talking about how he never wore the same socks twice i i watched the first film a lot of a child it's probably the comic book film i watched the most back then. yeah yeah big fan and nero tool who played clark kent's mom in uh, uh mrs kent in martha kent in um smallville was lana lang in the original movies oh nice proper yeah. superman fan on the podcast i know my stuff man I know my stuff. <laughs> well apologies for the shit airy pineapple but it's been a busy week <laughs> <laughs> well, do you want to talk about his video game days? Let's let's do it. Let's let's delve in. <laughs> delve in, because you worked you worked for a, a very big, well known company, didn't you, Paul? I did, uh, albeit briefly, uh, a few moons ago now. But yes, I did work for a quite big, somewhat well known. I got a few games out, uh, video game company. How much can you actually talk about it? That's the question. Everything you already know, I knew, and everything I know is already already out there. I can't go into too much because I think I'm still 
under an NDA for, for the rest of my life. It was very brief. Uh, it wasn't very long that I worked there. Uh, it was, uh, and then I came back to England, England land, and then pursued other ventures. But yeah. So you, you saw no. <laughs> no, not even no, no, nothing, nothing. So that's been rumored for ages. Get a lie detector on him. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure I would pass. No, but it's pretty cool. But it was uh, the commute that killed you off, wasn't it? It, it wrecked me. Yeah, I was traveling from uh, Glasgow to Edinburgh on a daily basis, which isn't too bad if I was in Glasgow, but I was in sort of the suburb and I had to get up at like five in the morning to get there for eight. Uh, Jesus. And then on the way back, yeah, it was just killer. Are you still in the gaming industry? I'm not, no, no. I work for the, uh, I work for the home office now. Ooh. Uh, Ooh. <laughs> unfortunately, I can go into even less about what I do now. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I work for the home office. It's a secret man. <laughs> I am a secret man. And now you uh, direct Monster Hunter films. And... I do direct my, I, you know, I wear many hats. <laughs> Oh boy, they're bad films, aren't they? Whereas the evil ones I'm talking about. No. <laughs> the first two were alright, and then they just went off the rails. The third one's awesome. The third one? Yeah in the desert and stuff it's the furthest away from Resident Evil yeah and that's why it's good yeah probably you're probably right because Resident Evil sucks shut your whore mouth <laughs> should we get onto the small pineapples the trailers let's do it let's let's do it well the first trailer we're going to talk about the devil all the time this has got a lot of people in hasn't it yeah everyone who's sort of somewhat famous these days is in it yeah Pretty much. It's got a lot two of Marvel, Marvel boys Marvel in. Marvel keeps in it as well, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Sebastian Stan and Tom Holland. Tom Holland playing very against character. Well, against Spider-Man. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Spider-Man yeah. never pulled out a ye old pistol on somebody. And... He's yeah. got Batman in as well, hasn't he? Yeah, he's got Batman. But well, he's not Batman yet. Oh, yeah. Good old Robert. Our Paz. He's going to be good, though, as Batman. But yeah. let's not talk about Batman. This is Bat Devil all the time. We'll get on to Batman later. Yeah, it looks... Yes. I thought it looked a bit Oscar baity to me. It's a period piece, isn't it? 60s, is it set, maybe? Is it? Because it could kind of look like it's set in any... It's just rednecks, isn't it? They there have was stuff cars. about World War Two though, weren't they? He gave him his dad's oh, gun yeah. stuff. Yeah, true, yeah, yeah. Yeah, with the, the person on the cross. And the, mm, with and his then, skinned alive. And then oh. a preacher comes to town and all hell breaks loose. Yeah, putting, like, crickets on his face. Just looks a bit <laughs> weird in places, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. Bring crickets on his face. That's how they get you. <laughs> Good old preachers. Yeah. I think uh, is. Is Arpaz going to be the antagonist? Looks a bit that's, that's shady. What, yeah, they're trying to paint it that way, aren't they? But they might yeah. pull from under us when it's released. True. Mm. I want to see him go mental, because I don't think we've ever seen him go, like, you know, full batshit crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Off the reservation nuts, like a cage rage. Yeah, <laughs> that's what we need. That's what we need. <laughs> I watched um, just a side sidebar. I watched National Treasure the other day, and Nick Cage only rages once in that entire movie. Only once. Absolutely destroyed me as a as a as a prolific fan of the man. <laughs> I bet there'll be dullier scenes. There will be. <laughs> Stop raging, Nick. No. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> But yeah, the devil all the time, it looks alright, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah somewhat. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Let's talk yeah. about Unpregnant, comedy about abortions. Oh, I thought this was going to be a horror. No, it's a coming-of-age abortion yeah. film. Coming-of-age road movie, abortions. Mm. With uh, everyone's favourite bad guy, forgot the actor's name, but it's uh, Gustavo Fring from Breaking Bad, who plays every bad guy in everything. He plays oh, a guy. yeah. Mm? yeah. He's playing a good guy in this. Uh, he kills babies. Damn him. He's a backstreet abortion guy, isn't he? <laughs> so... uh, I mean, this is the whole debate, isn't it? Is it, is it a baby? Is it a baby he's killing? Mm, I bet she keeps it in the end. After he's killed it? No, I mean, it doesn't This, this movie took a turn, mate. <laughs> <laughs> it reanimates. No. Uh, right, let's stop. <laughs> but yeah, it yeah but it, he looks like a criminal, doesn't he? I mean, he's got a weird scar down his face. Of course he's a bad guy. Did you watch The Mandalorian, Paul? I did. Watched it all. Two days. What did you think? I loved it. It was really good. Yeah, I loved how like uh, they kept it grounded. They didn't throw any Jedi's in or anything like that. It was just a story about a Mandalorian. And obviously, you've got Baby Yoda throwing Force out, but it was like really subtle. And I think it was good that they. Uh, it was a Star Wars show that didn't have that much of the Force in it, and it was just about like literally about a side character in it, which was good. And uh, John Favreau is it? Is that his name? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he was. Uh, yeah, he's really good. I think he uh, he's doing good things. So uh, I hope to be as pleasantly surprised season two they didn't need a lot of the episodes that did they no you could probably could have cut it out but i still like i didn't i didn't sit there thinking like oh like 
I wish oh, this yeah, yeah. one episode. I, it was like I, I still sat and like watched it all. I wasn't like. What was uh, the worst episode in your opinion? Oh, which one was a side? Not with the one we went to the farm because that was actually all right. Uh, and it took like six years to get a uh, 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 walker to walk three feet into a puddle. <laughs> <laughs> that suspended my disbelief a little bit. I think the th- was it the third episode only because I feel it's unmemorable. Nothing much drives the plot, but I think that's true for many things. Like the first and second episodes are normally the best. Mm. They, they, they hit you not the best, but they hit you with all the setup, and then uh, you can kind of chill out a bit in the third. You've already got people. I mean, we didn't like the um, the one on Tatooine with the rip-off Han Solo. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. No, yeah, I see what you mean, yeah. Uh, yeah, is that the one where um, at the end there's that other bounty hunter woman? She's not a bounty hunter. And he, yeah. like... Like by ming Wen, who they wasted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that were a bit weird. I-, I never felt like that came to a satisfying conclusion, I don't think. Well, that was the one that set up with the Boba Fett, weren't it? Ah, yeah. So at the end, you hear these jingly jangles. <laughs> jingly, and then him disintegrating somebody. Yeah. What is the love for Bobber like? He just looks cool, doesn't he? Does he though? Yeah. Yeah, it does. But like, all he did in movie, in in movie, <laughs> were, <laughs> in movie, <laughs> were comically fall into a floating ship and then get eaten. He did nothing else. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he stood there and looked cool, though, didn't he? Yeah. Have you seen the guy underneath the mask? No. Oh, he's like some like forty-five-year-old accountant with like circular glasses. Nice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> striking fear well <laughs> let's uh, let's move on just a little uh, side note of mandalorian five years apart this i'd hated this trailer did you mm. why it just looked horrible and the like the whole editing of the actual trailer was just oh, you make the trailer itself for the content. yeah yeah because it was like every time a character spoke everything went silent all the background music cut off it just seemed really just horrible and australians you know they're all criminals yeah. ouch <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, what did you think about this trailer, Mr. Pineapple? It looked alright. You're the like, trailer guy. I like all the, the trailers. It's the broad from Agents of Shield, isn't it? Chloe Bennett. Yeah. Yeah. Is she the one that's married to Logan Paul? Or is that somebody else? No clue. No, it's someone else. Uh... Logan Paul's God. It is, it is, it is. Hang on. I'm sure about this. He's with a Victoria's Secret model, isn't he? Ah. Uh... I watch his vlogs, mate. Do you really? He's got all right since he. I don't know. I'm stopping this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, they were they were going out and then they um, they terminated their relationship in October 2008. Terminate. Yeah. It says officially broke up, but terminate is way more apt. <laughs> Like, it looks like a rom-com indie type thing. Yeah, probably yeah. Watch it. I always feel that the jokes in those kind of films, like the indie sort of rom-com scenes, they always fall flat, and I don't know if that's just my difference in humour. I mean, I, I watched this indie rom-com the other day uh, that we talked about the trailer recently, Palm Springs, the time oh, did you watch with it? Andy Samberg. Yeah, insanely good. I highly recommend it to everyone. I had to watch it via illegal means, but... <laughs> 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 because it's not out in the UK yet, but I recommend it if you're into time loop films and just Andy Samberg being awesome. And J.K. Simmons is in it just being batshit crazy. J.K. Simmons. So. He's, he's good, isn't he? He is. Recommend that, film. that film is probably much better than Five Years Apart. Yeah, most definitely. The War with Grandpa. This looks garbage, doesn't it? And I can't wait to watch it. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, it looks complete shit. Robert De Niro's got two Oscars. <laughs> <laughs> to me, it sort of seems like the kid version. If you were to take Grandpa and then just water that down, like, oh, yeah. Yeah. Massive. Because yeah. Brad Grandpa had some laughs in it. Uh, the Zac Efron one. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was by no means like <laughs> a great movie or anything, but it, it wasn't a it bad was, movie. Yeah. This looks terrible. This looks like like a child is literally setting up his grandpa in many situations that would result in his death. Uh, yeah, he yeah. wants his room back. Yeah, and they're playing it for the lols. <laughs> <laughs> like he would have died in at least three points in that trailer. He would have died. Yeah, um, sure. yeah. For for the the narrative is essentially an old man has to move in with his daughter and her family, and the young kid whose room's been taken over is like, I ain't having none of this living in the attic shit, mate. And then proceeds to antagonise his grandpa. That. Did you like it when the kid banged his head on one of the attic beams? No. That's a moment where I lost faith in films. <laughs> I'm going to watch it so hard, though. So hard? Yeah. 
<laughs> Great cast, though. It's got Christopher mm. Walken in. He needs a paycheck, I'm assuming. That's why he's in it. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Cheech, Cheech Marin's in it. It's got my girl Jane Seymour in. Dr. Quinn Medicine Woman herself. And she's still fit, mate. She's old now. Yeah. yeah. I don't think she's ever been fit. <laughs> 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 yeah, it looks crap, doesn't it? And I can't yeah. wait. I can't wait to watch it. You know what doesn't look crap though? Space Sweepers. Oh, the sports. Korean film. Yeah. Yeah. I think one of the first Korean films not directed by Park Chan Wook, so he did like the old boy, um, Sympathy for Mr. Vengeance series. Uh, it's one of the first Korean films to come out that like hasn't had his name attached to it and has got some traction in the West, which is good. There's probably a lot more. <laughs> Mr. Pineapple held holds his breath. <laughs> I, I mean to the masses, of course, not the um I just yeah. gonna pa- para- parasite. I'm just gonna say that that was out there, you know. That's Korean. I mean, that, that won an Oscar, didn't it? I completely forgot mm, about that. Many yeah. Oscars. Train to Boost. Yeah. Um, All right, I'll, I'll give you Parasite. <laughs> but, like, the other ones. Okay, yeah, there, there's been a few. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Asian cinema is my jam, you know. I know it all. This looks good. Though. Yeah, it's space sweet. I like to look at it. It's about sort of garbage men in space take the salvage and try and make cash. Yeah. And there's a robot bomb Who's girl. Definitely thing. gonna be the bad guy. What? The, the robot's gonna kill everyone. Well, that's but, uh, robot's intent. It's a bomb. It's a world ender. Oh. Did you not watch the trailer? I don't like subtitles. Oh wow. <laughs> I'm kidding. No, I did, but I watched it like ten minutes ago. So. You don't even need the subtitles to get the gist of what's going on in it. Do you mean well, the? All right. Mean, I'm just saying, like you know, it's it's very uh, it's very visual in it. It's all it's all style, and I doubt there's going to be much substance to it. It's going to rely heavily on its style mm. and its weirdness get by but uh yeah there were some scenes when the cg looked really good but i think yeah i'll see if it holds up right there rest of the movie yeah i'm, ex- I'm excited for it. it does look interesting well, that's it for the films we've got a tv show called hoops which is an animated show by netflix mm. um how many more are they gonna do yeah it's, it's becoming an issue now <laughs> Well, you've got you've got like I mean, Big Mouth successful. It's a very successful show. A lot of people watch that. Second to that, would be Paradise PD, and it seems like in the interim between a new series of Big Mouth coming out, they're just throwing animation as the same sort of comedy. Well, you got one. F is for family F as well. As well, yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, because yeah. Yeah. They're, they're all the same humour, aren't they? Yeah, um, yeah. Oh, look, these people swear a lot. Yeah. That's the type of humour it is. Yeah, but now this time it's a basketball coach. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how much longevity that has. No. Was it set in the 80s? I don't know. They pour hot tea on him instead of Gatorade. That's all I know. <laughs> Yeah. He's voiced by Jake Johnson, the guy from New Girl. Oh, oh right. yeah. And Jurassic the New World. Girl. And Jurassic World. Plays the nerd guy, doesn't he? Apparently he's not going to be in the new Jurassic World. He didn't add much to the first one, did he? So, so Well, the headline, the headline said, fan favourite Jurassic World character. I was like, meh, yeah. yeah. He was in it for what? Five minutes? If that. Just because he wore a fucking Jurassic Park t shirt. And attempted to kiss his co worker. We've all been there. Oh. <laughs> My co worker is a man, and I have not attempted to kiss him. <laughs> At the home office. I like, can't speak about. I can't. You... But yeah, oops. We don't need it. Just give us another season of Big Mouth, you know what I mean? But the next trailer is a documentary. You cannot kill David Arquette. This looks amazing. Yeah, I, um, I like David Arquette as a person, you know. Did he kill WCW in, you know, 2000 by winning the world title? No, it was already dying, but... <laughs> <laughs> I like that he wanted to redeem himself and be like, yeah, I'm not a joke. Yeah. And then proceeded to nearly die multiple times in wrestling matches. It and good. it obviously killed his career in Hollywood. Yeah. I think it's, uh, <laughs> I don't know if it's egotistical or not, but to assume that one man, <laughs> one actor killed an entire franchise is uh, is pretty big. And if, if, if I were David Arquette and I killed WCW in the back, back in the early 2000s, I'd be like, well, I'm fucking, I'm God on her, like I, I'm why one man have <laughs> taken down <laughs> uh, championship wrestling. Um, but yeah, this looks mental. Like yeah, because he's I mean he's a. Uh, I looked into this a little bit because I was interested in some of the plot points for it. Because I used to think that David Arquette was the most boring man that has ever 
ever lived. Um, <laughs> and because he just looks like the most boring man. He and does. Then, yeah. then you see, you, you you look into his past a little bit, and obviously he was married to Courtney Cox for, for uh, like ten years, I think. And he had loads of addiction problems and stuff like that. And then he had a heart attack. Uh, and then he was like, "Yeah, I'm going to go back to pro wrestling." So um, you've got to think that the mindset of this man is not stable, and this is going to be brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it looks it does look really good he was training in like the middle of a road at one point with a lucha mask on yes, I'm there <laughs> there is some insane imagery in the in the trailer yeah. yeah and it's got DDP in you know oh yeah oh, boy Diamond Dallas Page oh, oh no I, I thought it had Sting in it but it didn't have Sting that's something else I was watching. but he got jacked for it though considering oh. it's like 47 yeah well, saying that, people still compete in World's Strongest Man in the 40s, don't they? But yeah, he's still, I mean, he's still got Jack for it. More so after his heart attack as well. I'd chill out after a heart attack, mate. I'd be like, oh, <laughs> better, uh, better sit up for a few a few decades now. Rather than being in death matches. Yeah. Getting your throat slit and nearly bleeding out. Yeah, with a, um, with a fluorescent light, wasn't it? it yeah. Put him in the neck and he got all infected shiz. He's a crazy man. Yeah. Oh yeah, still looks boring though. Like his, he just looks like a boring <laughs> person. <laughs> it just looks like Joe Average. You know what I mean? Like yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Maybe you should go and kill Dewey Dewey. That'd be good. <laughs> Don't give us hope. Don't give us hope. <laughs> For the next trailer, Skin, a history of nudity in films. Cannot fucking wait. <laughs> <laughs> Good old Kevin Smith. Yeah, no, right at the end. Like, Kevin Smith was like, uh, just there. Oh, we've also got Kevin Smith in this movie. All right. But yeah, no, I, I'm quite interested because uh, I think it was like censorship is an intriguing thing. Cause I think it always sort of goes with the climate. Like, uh, what is it in Casablanca? Is it Casablanca where it says, quite frankly, my dear, I just don't give a damn at the end? Gone with the wind. Gone with the wind. It was gone with the wind that was on the tip of my tongue there and they almost didn't get that in quite frankly my dear I just don't give a damn because damn was considered a swear word like a pretty hefty swear word back in the day you're like dropping more than one fuck in a 12a so yeah that almost didn't get in and then they just edited it in in the last minute <laughs> was like yeah you yeeted it out <laughs> <laughs> so yeah censorship always uh, always fascinates me so I think this will be good and there's nothing been more centered around censorship than nudity because an naked body just freaks people the fuck out uh, especially kids wait it freaks kids out or it's <laughs> kid body either way mate isn't it people are not even <laughs> touching that <laughs> not even going there not even touching that nice nope. nice use nope. of words uh... yeah but nope. that's <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm uh, much like Paul. I I love censorship. I don't love censorship. I hate it. But I love reading up about it and stuff. And the haze code that they had in the back in the studio system is just yeah. it made everything so difficult. Um, also, fuck Marilyn Monroe. She's a bitch. <laughs> Entertaining though. And they they they're claiming everyone always puts her on this pedestal and claims that she was so you know groundbreaking. But there were many other people who were very much naked in films before her. So fuck her again. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so yeah it's because she um, was banging um was it kennedy yeah. uh she yeah. was everyone yeah. everyone Every, everyone, yeah, everyone. <laughs> like, the, like the neighborhood bike <laughs> everyone got a ride oh, <laughs> but, yeah and then it, it i like that yeah i like the talking heads they could seem like they've got some good guests that are gonna be yeah. in you know i don't like that they sort of shoe on in the me too movement stuff I think uh, I, I think understand you... why I understand why it's there, but yeah, yeah. If you did if you did it in a more sort of subtle way, instead of like saying "me too" and then just plastering uh, the sort of movement on the screen, I think. But I think when you're talking about nudity in films and you're sort of going from back in the what 30s, 40s to today, I think you have to sort of give oh, it yeah. a shout. Yeah, mm. just a bit jarring. Casting yeah. couch, isn't that? Um... <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> but the last trailer uh, I think we all watch different trailers for this because I just put the, the name of the game Cyberpunk 2077 7, Cyberpunk 70. Seven, seven. Yeah. Is this game ever going to come out? Who knows? Hey, well, November. Was it November 9th? I want to say. Maybe not. Probably not. I had a nine in there. I had a nine 19th, in there, didn't maybe. it? Maybe. Yeah. Mm. It went on about the three. It went to more detail about the three life paths you can take. Yeah. 
There were also a, a weapons trailer and a becoming Johnny Silver hand, is it? Silver oh, the, the, the thing where they were, yeah, they, they, they got the musicians, the Swedish, yeah. Swedish musicians, I want to say. Yeah. Uh, to Refused, is it? Something, yeah, yeah, something like that. I, and, I didn't see this tra- trailer written at the bottom, so I'm none the wiser. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yeah, so basically, they got a band to play Keanu Reeves uh, when he's singing. Because Gunner Reeves is obviously in a band inside. Uh, yeah, it looked cool as hell though. Down, yeah. And, what then, and then there was the uh, the weapons trailer <laughs> where it showed off all the guns, and then the melee cyber fucking katana and yeah. mantis arms and shit. Yeah, yeah, that was and, cool. And then there were a trailer with the three life paths, the Nomad, Street was, Kid, and Corpo. Yeah, Corpo. I think the Corpo one looks the most uh, interesting, to be fair. I might go Nomad at best. I don't know. Like, because I think that's the furthest removed from the other two. And then yeah. I think then being the other two will be a fresher experience upon a second playthrough, perhaps. Yeah. Nomads are basically like cowboys, aren't they? Yeah, they're like Southerners. Yeah. I, I mean, American Southerners. Yeah, just... not English Southerners. No, but... not English. They're, they're very different things. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it looks... I'm just... It's got so many pushbacks... And... I, I think that that works in his favor. Um, I think that because I mean they did it with Witcher Three as well, but like nobody gave a crap because like nobody knew how good Witcher Three was going to be. Now they've got a pedestal to meet, and there's more traction behind it. Now you notice this stuff more. True, true. Keanu Reeves, so. though. Yeah, yeah. You're breathtaking. Oh, they loved that. Like the when they did that at E3, was it E3 2018? Uh, yeah. And people just lost their shit. Uh, and then I can imagine CD, CD Project Red sitting there going, ah, we've done it. We've got it. This is going to be a. We picked the right guy, boys. Yeah. This is it. <laughs> this is it. Just time to ejaculate money. Apparently, it's going to have some more actors in, but they haven't really shown them off because. You know, Keanu Reeves and that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he is bankable. He is. I'm wankable. I would. Yeah? Uh, I'd say no. Because you're a gentleman. I am a gentleman. <laughs> I'd be like, Keanu, I, I appreciate your advances, but, but no. Uh, you have to take me out for a helicopter. <laughs> take you out for a hel- helicopter. <laughs> A drink a helicopter <laughs> I would like please <laughs> <laughs> and there that's that's the last of the trailers boys let's get on to the news a few this week yeah, yeah a lot too many some would say but yeah the first big news we're going to talk about is DC fandom news boys mm. the schedule is being released when is it next week yeah I think yeah August 22nd so apparently this is just obviously there's like little bits of like comics and all that stuff but i'm just going to talk about the big films schedule so kicking off apparently is wonder woman 1984 and we'll get an all new sneak peek at the upcoming film plus a few more surprises wow (laughs) and then there's a 10 minute panel of the flash with ezra woman beater miller oh shit (laughs) <laughs> um, and then we're going to get Suicide Squad with James Gunn and all the cast, including the boy John Cena. And then it's going to go on to Black Adam, where Dwayne Johnson will hand deliver some surprises. And then we've got Aquaman and Shazam. And Shazam. All right, then. Apparently they're going to be at the same time for some stupid reason. And then the big boy Zach's coming out, isn't he, to talk about Justice League. The Schneider cut. Yeah. Oh, boy. Zach. Zack Snyder fields questions from fans and few surprises guests as he discusses his eagerly awaited upcoming cut of a 2017 feature film and the movement that made it happen. Hashtag Zay. And then we're going to get some a 30-minute panel, so I'm hoping there's a trailer of The Batman, good old Robert. Oh, and nice. then to finish it off, we're going to get the Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League game and maybe an am- announcement of the other game they've been working on at Warner Brothers Montreal. And then Superman Man of Tomorrow will premiere to finish the whole thing off apparently obviously there's going to be comic book panels and various other stuff and tv stuff i don't know what that superman man of tomorrow is is it a tv show is it an animated movie animated television show featuring superman so yeah your boy's excited oh god yeah i'm always up for more dc uh dc comics and DC Television. Television. I'm excited for the look of James Gunn's Suicide Squad, I'm not going to lie. Yeah. Uh, the Batman and the Suicide Squad game. Oh, fun. the new Rocksteady um, yeah. venture. Yeah. 
I think that they were the perfect studio to go with it as well. I remember playing, so I played all of the Arkham series. I really, really enjoyed them. And then yeah. I played Arkham Origins, which was made by Warner Brothers Studios, not yeah. Rocksteady. And that was, in comparison, it was still probably a really good game, but I just felt that it wasn't as polished as the rest. So yeah. uh, I have faith in Rocksteady. I think they're going to do good. Well, they've been working on a game, haven't they? Like DC Gotham Knights or whatever it's called. Yeah, I've, I haven't heard too much about it. but They're the only ones that have really put teasers out. It's only last week, I think it was, weren't it, with the Suicide Squad picture that got released. Yeah. Superman in the, or maybe not Superman in the crosshairs. Who knows? Maybe it's that evil Superman. Forgot his name. What? <laughs> Bizarro, is it? Oh no, he's not evil. Well, he is, but he's just he's just backwards. So like, you think there's a Bazzaro as well, who's the world's worst detective? Wow. Yeah, he uh, <laughs> he kills somebody, and then if I'm remembering this right, he kills somebody, and then follows a trail of clues that he just makes up, and then to frame somebody else for doing it, kills them, and then just repeats the process. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure that's how it is. If it's not, then that, that should be how it is, because that's just brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> but we've got some other DC news. Uh, they've, they've fired a lot of people, haven't they? Warner Media lays off most of DC Universe's staff, along with DC Comics editor in chief Bob Harris. Oh boy, oh boy, boy, boy! I swear they fired a lot of people like the other week as well. Was this for the uh, Was this for the the movies, or was this for the actual DC company? Because if it's Warner Brothers that are firing them, then I'm guessing it's just going to be for the movie side of it. It says here on the comic side, around a third of DC's editorial staff are gone. Jesus, including editor in chief Bob Harris. DC Universe was a DOA as soon as the AT&T merger happened. So it's dead. something to do with that. Dead on arrival. Well, rip them people that have probably been working for DC for years. Good old big companies, eh? Just killing people off. I mean, they haven't killed them. Killing them. That's not what firing means. <laughs> <laughs> Shooting them. They've Back stopped their head. employment. They haven't, like, shot them in the head. <laughs> um, sure, that'd be a much bigger news article. <laughs> be a better article. We'd, we'd have a lot of dead people for the dead people section, that's for sure. Damn right. <laughs> but the last bit of DC news, Zach really stay Steppenwolf pitching, didn't he? His hmm. design of Steppenwolf, which is going to be in the Snyder Cut. Yeah. What did yeah. you think? Better than the one that we got in the movie. Better than uh, the old wrinkly man. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, uh, Steppenwolf was always like awesome. I'd, I'd love seeing him in the comics. Superman becomes him at one point. Uh, or like a weird clone of Superman becomes, uh, in Earth 2 comics. And that, yeah, but it, anyway, really good character that, uh, that did not get justice in the movie. So Well, uh, they had a little, uh, I think it were in a deleted scene, weren't it? A like, little clip of Steppenwolf. Steppenwolf in Batman v Superman. Yeah, yeah. He is the same design as that one because he changed yeah. it in Justice League because reasons and stuff. <laughs> Joss Whedon. Oh boy. Um, oh, not been a good, uh, good month for him, has it? <laughs> <laughs> no, it has not. <laughs> Oh boy, he makes bad films. Just no, um, nah, he made the nah. first Avengers. I think that went pretty well. I, I still like that now. He made Serenity. He made the second one though. Serenity didn't. was really good. But made, I love Serenity. Yeah, we made of it. Age of Ultron. So it just yeah, it. just writes him out of any good film that he's ever made. Sorry, <laughs> that's, that's not how this works. <laughs> <laughs> if only he died after making Avengers one, then his legacy <laughs> would have remained. <laughs> <laughs> remained intact but yeah what do you think mr pineapple you're you're being a bit quiet on the old dc news why is that i'm not the biggest dc fan am i <laughs> why not i just don't like comic i mean you do that's true yeah. Um, yeah i just don't care for this i don't i'm not you're gonna make me watch it but mm, or like four hours of it yeah i just couldn't care less <laughs> is it because it's a film that you've already seen from 2017 i mean Just i don't i don't mind it. i don't mind the director's cut there's a few good ones out there uh kingdom of heaven being a good example yeah. of the great director's cut um but this one they, i don't believe adding any amount of things to this film is going to turn it from a dumpster fire it might put the dumpster fire out it's it might, it's still know, dumpster but it's not on fire yeah <laughs> 
it's going to be interesting. I I I like right right. I like oh, Zack boy. Schneider. Watchmen is one of my favorite films. I fucking love Watchmen. I, I think that was just fantastically done. But something went wrong here. And <laughs> 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 something went wrong. Something went badly wrong. Uh, and I, I I hope that it improves it and it gets a bit more positive press rather than just being a literal dumpster fire. Yeah. It's yeah. I rewatched Justice League not not uh, long back, and it's just horrible. <laughs> I think it's because you've got the uh, the dark, gritty tones of Zack, and then good old Joss Whedon comes in and throws tit jokes and yeah. <laughs> flowers into the mix, and it's just a weird color scheme. I, just, I mean, Zack's already got a weird color scheme to yeah. all of his films, but oh boy. <laughs> I did like the the one scene that did stand out to me though, and and uh, yeah, it, I don't think this has been panned in any way, but like the scene where Superman wakes up and he's not dead anymore, and then he takes on the rest of the Justice League. That was awesome. But I think that is literally the only bit of the film that I think was, and I, I just pains me to say this, but I think it was the only thing that was pretty decent in the film. Yeah, but Flash trips up in that scene, doesn't he? Let's be it honest. Does. It does. Uh, Jesus. It's about as stupid as Quicksilver getting shot to death. But yeah, yeah Ubisoft uh, fires Assassin's Creed director. I think this been... is, is this the second one they've got through. I'm not sure. This is the guy that's directing Valhalla, so I don't know what's what's going to happen there. I'm going to bring it... Josh, Josh Whedon in to mix. <laughs> it's probably mostly done now anyway. Uh, like, yeah. As soon as you start releasing trailers and and stuff like that you've got you've got most of the core game done mm, just touch ups yeah but why was this was it over sexual misconduct oh, like I'm oh, that's that's true. yeah I'd heard about that, yeah. I, I haven't seen too much about it, though, so I don't know. But Have you, Mr. Pineapple? No, no, I, w- I didn't get touched. You didn't get That's... touched? No. Good. That's all that matters. <laughs> Ashraf Ismail was accused by a fan in June of lying about his marital status in order to have a relationship with her. Shortly after, Ismail wrote on Twitter that he had stepped down from his role, adding that he was deeply sorry, sorry to everyone hurt in this. As far yeah. as sexual misconduct things go, that's got to be the shittest one. Yeah, it's not even interesting. It's not, oh. it's not even like, yeah. Could have at least touched her or something, could not he? Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Good old misconduct, lying about that you're married. Lying about being married, wow. <laughs> I mean, is it? Do you even fire someone for that? I, I mean, you've got to. It's not. It's not hard to see if someone's married or not either, is it? Like, just go on the Facebook. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's not an hard thing. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that was interesting. I hope that we're going to be more interested. Mm. You know what is interesting? Halo Infinite delayed till twenty twenty one. Oh boy! Won't save that, will it? <laughs> did you Did you see the footage of this? It looked. At, it looked like I made it. Yeah. I mean, no offense to you, but yeah. <laughs> Yeah. No, no, no. That's, that's entirely what I'm going for. <laughs> but uh, I lost faith in it. I love Halo. I absolutely loved and loved and loved it. Uh, and then 343 took over, which I'm sure with the best of intention, it just it did not go well. And I haven't liked any of the games they've put out. So I don't think some more time under the it hood just, is going to fix this. Like it, it looked like a 360 game. Yeah. And the their excuse for it was... Oh, well, we were going for an old style because you said you wanted to bring it back to its original franchise-like feel. It's like, yeah, yeah, but make it look good. (laughs) If you're going to top bollocks, at least make sure it's believable bollocks, you know what I mean? Yeah. (laughs) But I thought it was going to be a launch game with the Series X, but obviously not anymore. Rippity roo. It's not their prize pony anymore, Microsoft, so... um... No. I guess Gears of War is, but then they kind of fucked that up with 5, didn't they? I didn't mind 5. It wasn't... It wasn't it wasn't unenjoyable um, was that the one with a woman is that why people don't yeah. like it yeah, yeah probably yeah. Yeah. Uh, women Which is, can't be fierce it's, warriors it's so weird because some of like, the biggest gaming franchises in history are women centric like Tomb Raider it's the, the mo- my mom knows what Tomb Raider is you know what I mean like yeah. a person who's only ever played Mario before uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah so it's weird that people complain about that but I don't know internet virgins eh Def Jam Fight for New York sequel teased did we need that <laughs> do, we, do, we, do we need a new Def Jam <laughs> 100% we need a new Def Jam <laughs> 
<laughs> You're a big fan, Mr. Pineapple. I played them quite a bit in the uh, past. I don't own them anymore, sadly. I think I played a demo of one on a PlayStation demo disc one time. And I was like, what is this game? Bunch of rappers just fucking each other up, mate. <laughs> what more do you need? 50 Cent and Vanilla Ice going at it. You know. Boy. Glorious. And if it comes out, I'll be playing the shit out of it. You can have all Mumble rappers in this one, though. No. <laughs> Takeshi69 just, oh, just, <laughs> just ducks out of the fight and then just squeals on you and get arrested. <laughs> He's going to be on front of a case. <laughs> Who actually makes them? Was it game THQ? People. It wasn't Game Freak. You say Game Freak, the people that make Pokemon. No, Game People. <laughs> oh, it's a Game Freak. <laughs> <laughs> Pokemon, the rapper version. THQ, are they still around? No. They, they, but, yeah. yeah, they went and they sold the folder rights to like Red Faction and stuff like that. And I think they made a lot is of the... THQ Nordic, I think. I think they might still, still the be same? about... I don't know if it is THQ, it might not be. I just remember them to it somewhere. Or maybe I'm thinking of the wrestling games. I think THQ did the wrestling games. Yeah, maybe. That's way, way back when. Oh well, who cares, eh? Maybe a bad game, but do you know what is a bad game? Fast and Furious Crossroads. <laughs> oh boy, I <laughs> got reviewed, didn't it? Yeah. But, yeah. Not well. <laughs> Can't wait I, to play it. I didn't actually look at the review of this because I knew it was going to be bad anyway from the from the PS2 esque trailer that we watched. I wonder if it's if I'm right in saying like they got like Vin Diesel and all that and not Paul Walker, but they got Vin Diesel to come back for doing the voice lines in it. Yeah. And if yeah. you get the actors to come in and do voice lines in a game, which I, I feel is pretty rare nowadays, uh, if you manage to do that, is what I mean. Like, surely you're going to put a bit more effort into the game. Oh, yeah, and this is the people that need for speed. You know what I mean? Like, like they did that. That was a big name back in the day, and then they just churn out this piece of crap. <laughs> But saying that, the Fast and Furious cast would probably do anything for the Fast and Furious franchise. Yeah. Otherwise, well, they'll get chastised by Vin Diesel. <laughs> yeah. 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 You don't do a spin off movie, I'm going to wreck your shit. You don't want to get called out by Tyrese Gibson on Instagram, mate. I'm surprised Dwayne The Rock's career's carried on after that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the strong voice of Tyrese Gibson. <laughs> he should be living in the gutters right now. <laughs> When he when he cried because that Hobbs and Shaw were coming out and he needed money to pay his fucking baby mama or something. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> That's why they're writing all the jokes about him needing money in the movies, isn't it? Like, because he's he's like that in real life. <laughs> so they're always like it's like self jab, which I appreciate. I think it's good when people do that. Are you excited for Fast and Furious Nine? Always. Is I it will nine? Eat nine. You keep making them. I'll keep going to see them. <laughs> John Cena, because they can't get The Rock be back in the film. Only in his spin-offs. Oh boy. Did you watch Hobson's show? Yeah. I I haven't watched it. Have you yeah. watched it? Mr. It's the only one I've not seen. I've been meaning to, I just keep forgetting. Is it any good? It's no, no. But it's like I mean, yeah, are any of them any good? They're not good films. Like it's like let's talk about this from a from a sort of, you know, a cinematography standpoint. They are not they're not good. But like they're entertaining. They have presence. Like it's like Arnie. You can't act. But like is <laughs> you get him in front of the screen and people go and see that shit because he's got presence, you know what I mean? That's what that's what this is. That's what these movies are. They're mm-hmm. just spectacles to, to, to look at. And that's what Hobbs and Shaw was. It was it was super generic, but like it was yeah. I didn't come out of it going like, oh god, that was wish I never paid to see that. But uh I wouldn't write home to my mum about it. <laughs> it just looked too far fetched for me. I think too off the off the scale of Fast and Furious with the uh, superhumans and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. It just over though. <laughs> 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 the last bit of game news we're going to talk about the Avengers DLC characters got leaked mm. or maybe leaked I think they are leaked because someone went into the code of a beta and fucking picked out the names um, it seems like we're being really lazy to be honest because the characters are we've got She-Hulk War Machine and Kate Bishop Yes. Obviously, Hawkeye's already been announced, so they're the four DLC characters, and it's just uh, different versions of the characters we've already got in it. I think, well, I, I think, like, She-Hulk is going to control quite differently to Hulk, because she's a different set of abilities to him, apart from, you know, they're, they're both buff. But, yeah, uh, War Machine is probably going to be quite a lot like... I mean, Iron Man's all, like, sci-fi techie, War Machine's more grounded sort of stuff, but it's probably going to control the same, but... Yeah. I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen with this game. Like, it's not getting... <laughs> it's, it's not going well. No. We're trying to make it way too complicated, like I said on the previous podcast episode. And I don't know why. Just make it a fun game. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's Avengers. Kids are going to want to play this game. And you've got, like, grinding and fucking just all these. It seems like the story is just a set of missions that you can play through either on your own or co-op. And it just, I don't know, just the whole demonstration, the whole game just do not look great but we're gonna have to get it mr pineapple yeah i'll let you purchase that <laughs> but yeah i don't know why they've put hawkeye and kate bishop as dlc characters if you didn't like hawkeye you can play as his daughter do- not his daughter is it his daughter no no you can play as his female version of him his, his female <laughs> you can play as his female yeah um oh, square enix and but we're gonna get on to some disney news are you ready, boys? Spider-Man, the third one that's coming out, got a rumoured a rumored title, Homesick. What do you think? Just tripling down on the home names, aren't they? But the gunner, aren't they? I know, aren't they? You know, aren't they? <laughs> it'd, be weird, it'd be weird if they didn't at this point. Like, yeah. if, if they just called it, like, Spider-Man, Webby Boy. Or something like that, like without <laughs> without the without the home in it, it'd be jarring. It would it would send my OCD into overdrive. <laughs> I just just call it something with home in it. Just just do it. You've got two now. You can't do it. You can't wait, do third wait, without that. the Spider-Man Home Alone crossover event. Yeah, what we all want. Yes. Okay, Kevin McAllister would fuck him up. Spider-Man's Kevin McAllister and the Sinister Sinister Six. Uh, the two forgot what they're called. But yeah, <laughs> Spidey's dead. He's <laughs> dead. Mm. It's it's been rumored that Craven the Hunter is gonna be the the baddie though. Apparently, who could play Craven in your opinion, Paul? Hugh Jackman. Hugh Jackman. Huge. Huge Jackman. Who could play Craven? Uh, maybe, maybe I forget his name, but Daddy Winchester from Supernatural. Jeffrey Dean. Jeffrey Dean. That's the guy. That is the that's the ticket. Oh uh, yeah. He's always a reliable shout. Mm. Someone was saying that he's called Joe. He plays the Deathstroke in Justice League at the end. Joe Mantle, there you go. That one. Oh, yeah. yeah. Right, Vagara the Gara from Modern Family. Oh, look at you. Okay, my live? Yeah. House. House, mate. Lives in his house. Yeah. He lives in mine. Oh. He's, he's just one side of the door, mate. <laughs> oh, why, why have you got me on, then? Surely he would have been a better... <laughs> we, 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 don't, we don't let him out. Oh, that's... Only, only for when he's acting to bring in the box, you know. Okay. Yeah, he, has, he hasn't acted since that post credit scene, so... But, yeah, homesick. Eh, comes home. Ooh. Well, it's, <laughs> home yeah. alone. It's just been a very long trip to Europe for a minute. <laughs> mm, Spider-Man, homosexual. Who knows? <laughs> I'm just gonna. I put money on the fact that they will not call it that. I just. <laughs> I just I put. I put good money down on that right now. <laughs> Disney, they've officially ended 20th Century Fox. Rip. Done and dusted into the memories of some people that will remember it. They made them X-Men films, didn't they? Bless them. It did make them X-Film films. X-Film films, yep, they made those X-Film films. <laughs> XXX that's, films. That's not, yep. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Rip. Uh, Zac Efron starring Three Men and a Baby remake for Disney+. Plus. Yeah. I, I love Three Men and a Baby. You like your sitcoms, don't you? Not a sitcom, darling. It's a it's a film from 1987. Yeah, yeah. it had uh, Burt, Burt Reynolds. Was it Burt Reynolds or Tom Selleck? So Tom Selleck, Steve Tom Selleck. Bird and Ted Danson in. Poor man's Burt Reynolds. <laughs> it's a glorious film. Do you like Zac Efron to I, star in a remake? I love Zac Efron. You know this. Oh, yeah, you do, don't you? Yeah, he'll... He'll do it. I, I have no doubt he'll deliver. And I think they'll make it. They'll do it like you know that they did with they do with any remake these days. And they'll they'll just they'll, they'll put that that weird extra layer of comedy on it that wasn't there before. I uh, don't know who's gonna play the other two guys? Just Zac Efron. Oh, Zac Efron's playing everyone, and he plays the baby as well. Yeah, oh, just yeah. with his with his with his Netflix beard. <laughs> Just plastered on the face of a baby. Love but it. yeah, it's one. It's one of the remakes I'm not too angry about. <laughs> oh, so that's always a positive from me. I'm one of the Disney Plus series uh, films. You're not too angry I'm about. Too angry about yeah. Because you. <laughs> I think it's just because Zach's attached, you know. Yeah. Attach him to anything, and I'll be I'll be game pretty much. I'll attach him to you. Please. <laughs> <laughs> We've got some other, uh, some other Disney news. If that makes sense. Other, some other. Tron, the third one. Can you call it the third one? It's the yeah. third one, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, I I didn't mind Legacy. Uh, it it looked nice. And yeah, it, had, okay. it, it had my boy in it. You know what I mean? Like Jeff Bridges. Jeff Bridges I being mean, a techno hippie. He looked a bit weird when he was DH though, didn't he? Yeah, they they didn't have that tech. 
that good back then. Well, it's uh, it's got a director, hasn't it? Garth Davis. He did some films. Lion, starring Deb, Deb Patel. Patel. And Top of the Girl, Top of the Lake, China Girl. Yep. Probably so. Maybe. <laughs> But yeah, it's got Jared Leto in on it, oh. boys. He he leaked the, the name of it like a fucking dick because he put on Twitter. I'm so glad to be part of Tron Aries and then was like, oh, I'll remove that and just be like, I'm so glad to be a part of the Tron sequel, boys. I refuse to believe that things get leaked nowadays. I think it's just tactical distribution of information. Been in the home office too long, you mate. <laughs> no, no, you just you just see it all the time. Like it's uh, that's why I think Tom Holland is, even though like he definitely has slipped up a few times. I think. That oh they, yeah, with they, the Marvel stuff, yeah. They, they play up on that a lot. Yeah, that, uh, that's definitely a tactical thing with Tom. Yeah. Was it with Mark Ruffalo? Oh, when he screened the first 10 minutes of Thor Ragnarok on his phone to Instagram. Yeah, and he did and, say, oh, everyone dies, and then Don uh, Cheadle was like... What? Yeah, Don Cheadle was like, whoa! <laughs> yeah, that was. I think that was genuine. But, yeah. like, I refuse to believe... Like, like, if you think about this, like, Jared Leto's been attached to this project. He knows that we're not supposed to hear that name. He's had meetings, hour-long meetings, that yeah. have been said, do not say this name. People have expressly said when they're going to release this date, that we're going to tell everybody when it is on this time and everything like that. So for him to just randomly tweet it out is, I would be amazed if that was actually real, uh, as as in he actually did it by mistake. Yeah, that's the name of his character though, apparently, Ares. Yeah. Um, who knows what that means. Darkwing Duck is returning to DuckTales. <laughs> yeah, boy. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Anyone That's care it, about but... this? <laughs> I, care, I care about Darkwing Duck as, as a character, but less so about the David Tennant. Is he in the? Does he? Does he do? He's, in, that? he's in the new Ducktales. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> uh, speaking about cartoons, though, some other news is they're doing a SpongeBob spin-off based around Patrick Star. Oh God. But where's SpongeBob? Um, he finally accepted his homosexuality and he's gone on an adventure. <laughs> an adventure? Is that yeah. what people do when they come out of the closet? Yeah, he's gone to 1980s New York to get AIDS. Oh no. He's gonna soak up all the AIDS because he's a sponge. I would have preferred a Sandy spin off, personally, because I'm not The a Origins Patrick, of but... Sandy. Yeah, Sandy's great. Patrick's too much. He's not like he's good in small doses, but if you like, if you had that energy around you all the time, you'd just want to die, and that's why Squidward just wants to die all the time. I feel for him, man. Why are we doing this? Is Spon- SpongeBob still going? Yeah, guy created died, didn't he? Yeah, he's dead. Oh, that's right. probably why they're doing it, because he's not allowed to say no anymore. Yeah, yeah. Talk about dead people, though. Let's get on to our famous dead people section, where yeah. we respect the dead and all they've done. I need to pee. You need to pee. Fuck the dead, they can wait. You getting your dead people up? No, dead people get me up. Oh. All right, dead people, who have you got for us this week, Mr. Pineapple? Well, I'll start with the uh, the corona deaths. We haven't had a corona death in a long time. I know. Sadly. <laughs> I mean, we're... There's many corona deaths. Oh, there's there's multiple, but these are the only ones that matter. Yeah. Kamala. Yeah. Yes, Kamala, the Ugandan giant. Yeah. Former wrestler. Dead. How old were he? He was 70. 70? Yeah, you know Kamala, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Ugandan big, giant. Big, big monster heel, you know, in the mid-80s. Uh, I had a bit of a program with uh, Hogan in about 86. That was pretty mm. much the peak of his career. Um, after that, it was pretty much comedy up, you know, in the early 90s. Mm. Um, they did a bunch of sort of vignettes and stuff trying to acclimatise him to normal society, like where his manager took him bowling and stuff, rather right. than being this Ugandan barbarian guy. It was just a weird time. Mm. But yeah, a great wrestler, to be fair. Um, edge on the, uh, the racist was... edge. Oh, there was a lot of racism there, yeah. 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 He had to retire, though, due to uh, like diabetes and stuff. He, he lost both his legs. Due to diabetes yeah. and stuff, yeah. Um, I had, uh, had a lot of health issues and money troubles, you know, and it makes you think WWE needs to, need to have pensions or some shit, man. Definitely. You know, it's just, yeah. It's Vince, though, isn't it? Yeah, it's Vince. <laughs> he ain't going to give him any more money. But yeah, um, he's dead. <laughs> Next one. Trini Lopez. Yeah. Also COVID related. Way back, way back in the earlier episodes. Do you remember when I did the uh, the Harry Pineapple on the song lyrics that are a bit questionable? Oh yeah, yeah. And he sung the song "If You Wanna Be Harry." Ha- 
Harry, if you want to be happy, even. <laughs> if you want if to you be Harry. Be happy, marry a, an ugly chick or whatever the fucking song was called. Right. You know, because they're less likely to talk back to you than a, than a pretty woman is. <laughs> 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 oh boy! You know he's uh, he's he's he's, he's conked it. How <laughs> old oh, were he? He was eighty three. You know. Oh, wow. Also acted in a few films. You know, he's in the Dirty Dozen, oh. um, wonderful war film. You know, Dirty Dozen, but mostly no. Would they be the tremor cell? Uh, the yes. Possibly. Um, but yeah, dead. He's dead. That's all for the corona death. Normal people deaths. Normal people deaths now. <laughs> Raymond Gilmore Allen. Mm. Uh, mostly known for his television stuff, American sitcom type stuff. Uh, he was on Sanford and Sons and stuff like that, which was, I believe, an American take on Steptoe and Son. Oh. If you ever remember watching that. I do. Um, I do. Yeah. Because I am balls old. <laughs> <laughs> and he was all he start uh, like guest appeared in the Jeffersons and stuff, the Love Boat, in a few episodes of Starsky and Hutch as well. Great, great American show. Uh, but yeah, he's dead, age ninety one. Oh, he had a he had a good innings, didn't he? From a respiratory illness, possibly, co- possibly code for COVID. Who knows? My but next we've he's got dead. a uh, music man. Music man. <laughs> He comes uh, from far away. Yes. Uh, uh, ten weeks ago, I discussed that another member of this band passed away. Fuck it out. Um, yes, that man being Paul Chapman, who's the guitarist in UFO, wonderful rock band. But now the bass player of UFO, Peter Way, has passed away. Um, he also played with Ozzy Osbourne and stuff. He's just a decent lad. 69 from some oh, yeah. kind of accidental injury type things. Accidental. 69 is quite it's quite a young... It's not young, yeah. but like... It's it's quite today's society. I mean, you've only yeah. been retired five years, but if you're going to go early-ish, then 69 is the age to go at. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, there's not there's not many members of UFO left. How many? Two. Yeah. Because the keyboardist died exactly a year ago as well. Spook conspiracy. It's the Queen. So, rip, rip them. It's the Queen. It's the Queen. She's knocking them off. Oh, and uh, lastly, we've got Linda Manns. Uh, she wasn't the most prolific actress of all time, but she's in some uh, very influential independent films. You know, Terence Malick's Days of Heaven, uh, Dennis Hopper's Out of the Blue, and she's in Gummo, which is just a weird film from the late 90s. Also in The Wanderers, which I'm a big, big fan of. Wonderful film. And she was only 59. Uh, she sadly passed away from pneumonia and lung cancer. The woman is dead. The women is yeah. dead. Yeah. Well, ripperoo, I guess. Not alive anymore. But with death comes life. <laughs> Oof. <laughs> um, time for our OK magazine section, boys. Chris Pratt and Kathleen Schwarzenegger. Pratt, welcome, baby girl. Where did they welcome her into that house? Yeah, they were like, "This is our house, baby." And nice. like, thumbs up. And the like baby the was like, baby. I have no frame of reference to our houses, but thank you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Congrats to them. I guess. I guess. Yeah. A bit. Have I spelled that wrong? Bindi Irwin. <laughs> Bindi. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, she's expecting her first child with husband Chandler Powell. No, Powell? it's not. Powell. She's expecting it with the stingray that killed her dad. Oh. <laughs> Shit. Half stingray, half Owen. Owen. <laughs> I still like to, if I ever see a stingray, I like to just give it a quick jab, let it know that, you know, Steve Irwin's still got shooters out there. Is she a animal person as well? I believe so, yeah. I, I believe both the uh, Irwin. Both her, yeah. More so the brother. He's, He's been on talk shows, hasn't he? He has. I think she was her. on Dancing with the Stars as well. She was, like, really good on it, apparently. Dancing with a stingray. Dancing with the stingrays, yeah. Yeah. Um, and John Legend and Chrissy Teigen expecting their third child. How nice. Yeah, they struggled to conceive their first child. Because you were there. Um, because I was there, did you say? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I was just stopping. I was like, no semen. I, <laughs> I just threw it on the wall. I was like, get away. No baby. Jesus. <laughs> but yeah, it's that, it's that all you wanted to <laughs> Yeah, let's leave it there. No semen. <laughs> Uh, Liam Neeson, he's not stopping anytime soon, is he? With them action flicks. Yeah. He needs to. He's old. He's like, he's 70 or some shit. From Darkman to fucking Rome, painting on a wall, to whatever fucking film we 
watched the trailer for last week. The Honest Thief. The Honest Thief. He's made the same film for the past 12 years. Yeah. I are, you a, are you a fan of Liam Neeson, Paul? I, I don't think you can not really be. I mean, everybody's got a Liam Neeson film that they like. I, don't, <laughs> I liked him in Ted 2 when he's trying to buy that cereal. I don't know if you've seen Ted 2. No, can't say I that. Oh, no, he's trying to buy some cereal in it. And, uh, like, it's just a funny scene anyway. It's not in it, is it? <laughs> it is. It's, yeah. it, it, it's, I mean, I'm not, I'm not, you know, go look it up. I'm going to spoil it for you. <laughs> but, yeah, and, and I enjoyed the first take. And uh, the second and third, like, I'm like, what are you doing? But, like, because the plot just went. And did when you, w- Did you enjoy all the cuts when he jumped over the fence? Yep, yep. <laughs> they were my favourite parts. I like just epilepsy when I'm watching a movie. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and he was, you know, he was Qui Gon, weren't he, and all that. And uh, some would say the best Jedi. Yeah, there's there's certain things that came out of the Phantom Menace. There's certain things that came out of the prequel trilogy that were really good. But uh, <laughs> Darth like Maul, that. Darth Maul, and you know, uh, thing is, oh, um, oh my God, what is his name? Ewan McGregor. Ewan McGregor. There we go. As uh, as Obi Wan and uh, Liam Neeson as Qui Gon and Mace Windu. They're like the only good things. Did you hear about the Ray Park news recently? Uh, no, I did not. He um, posted a video of his wife giving him a blowjob on his Instagram story. <laughs> <laughs> Ray Park. <laughs> you do flips and shit. <laughs> <laughs> and he, he said something about leaving his son in the cold or something. He's oh, going to be insane, it seems. Going to be crazy. <laughs> But yeah, Ray Park. I mean, we were talking about Liam Neeson, but that, that went off in a time. He kills Liam Neeson. He does. He does. Stabs Stop him in. through his stomach and he just dies instantly, as people do in movies. Yeah. People die way too fast in movies. Like, you shoot somebody in the shoulder and they're, like, just dead. <laughs> <laughs> That's not how you die, I'm sure. I've well, seen like, it. Like, saber through the stomach, though. Yeah, no, it would kill you eventually, but like... Yeah, that's true. I mean... It'd like cauterise the wound for a start. Yeah. And Darth Maul survives getting cut in half. Cut in half, yeah. Yeah. Cut in half and falling down a giant fucking shoe as well. Yeah. Yeah. A, po- a pointless shoe, which uh, in every Star Wars movie, there's just giant death holes that lead to nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> Probably and no safety railings. Up. Like, yeah. <laughs> poor, poor, poor shouts. Avatar co creators. This is The Last Airbender, by the way. Not, yes. not the uh, blue people. Avatar, The Last Airbender. Um, co creators leave live action projects, which can only. <laughs> Tell us that it's shit. <laughs> yep. Yeah. This is Netflix, isn't it? Live yes. action. Pro- yeah. Oof. The reason apparently they left was a mixture of a few things, like budgetary issues, and also the the creators wanted to cast ethnic people. Oh and yeah. Netflix were like, "What about if we get some whites in?" <laughs> <laughs> you know. It's not like there's no white people in. I feel like I think the people from the Earth Kingdom, uh, they're white. And it, I don't know, but yeah, it's, it's not like you're not. Yeah, I don't know. Just I don't know. <laughs> it yeah. I mean, it just seems like they still think because they're going to cast ethnic people, it's not going to get any like viewership. Even though the whole thing about this is that it's Avatar: The Last Airbender, a very much loved cartoon that's getting brought back, which people are going to love anyway. So you don't need to cast fucking bald Tom Holland as Avatar, dear. That'd be weird. He'd do it though. I don't think Tom Holland is going to age well. I think he's going to keep that sort of sort of awesome. late teens facial structure, but his skin is just going to melt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and he's not getting any taller anytime oh. soon, is he? Oh, I think they're just feeding him growth stunts. <laughs> <laughs> Keep him at like five foot four or whatever. But yeah, that's going to be shit, isn't it? But some more Netflix news. Uh, Jonathan Price has been cast as the last Prince Philip on I the last season racist. of The Crown. You hope he's racist? Yeah. Yeah, probably. Do you watch The Crown? Have you ever watched The Crown? No. Don't know why this news is on here then, mate. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, it's just for you. <laughs> Princess Diana musical. Oh crap! <laughs> I hope it ends with a bang. Ah. Oh no, yeah. she's dead. Yeah, I hope weird, there's a isn't it? scene where she's having sex with that bouncer, and then Ginger Baby pops out that looks nothing like his dad. It looks a lot like a fucking bouncer. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, I'd get a DNA test there. <laughs> oh, I'd get a DNA test. <laughs> 
Like, who? Oh, God. I mean, we've already got fucking Twilight Girl playing her in an upcoming film. So why are they doing a musical? I don't know. Big target audience, isn't it? People yeah. always eat up royal stuff, don't they? Royal musicals. They always get watched and shiz. It's, yeah. like, it's like the British patriotism thing, isn't it? Like, the Americans are America, and we're like, queen and country. Yeah, I guess. Some always, it always gets eaten up. Um, enough, enough of us to make money. Enough of us yeah, to make money. Definitely, Doctor Who. That's yeah, Christopher Eccleston. Yeah, he's he's coming back as the ninth Doctor in an audio series. Mm, mm. Mm. Uh, yeah, mm. I remember when he left back in two thousand and five. I think uh, as the you know the the the, the ninth Doctor because he didn't want to be typecast. But I think there was more to it than that. I remember hearing a load of stuff about just shit not being right on the set of Doctor Who. How so, long was he Doctor for? One season. One season, yeah. Yeah, before Ten took over. He probably didn't want to get tied down for like five seasons, whatever they do it for as well. No, but it's like it's a pretty lucrative. I mean. You get, you're an actor, I mean, it, it was in Heroes for a bit afterwards, but I don't know, stay on for a couple of seasons, maybe get a steady paycheck. And mm. I mean, he was in his 40s when he did Doctor Who, like, you don't want to get typecast, you should have many opportunities before then not typecast. Yeah, I guess. But he's so, returning. Yeah. It's good for some people, I guess. Yeah. Oh, he was in G.I. Joe as well. Was it? Yeah, he was, uh, not, he was not the command, he was the co- uh, oh, what the fuck was his name? I can't remember who he played. Joseph Gordon-Levitt was the, co- the commander, uh, and he was, like, the the billionaire that was financing everything in it. He's also in that shit four film. Right. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. The Dark World. Dark World was super boring. The only good bit in it was the bit when Loki and Thor worked together near yeah. the end. And he chops Thor's hand off. That was the only good bit. <laughs> the Fresh Prince is getting a reboot. Dark and gritty, so I hear. Yeah. Not dark, not, not dark and gritty. More grown up. I think it's less comedy, more more real. Oh, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, Yeah. that should be interesting. And Will Smith's attached, isn't he? Maybe it's Jaden Smith going to play. Oh, oh for fuck's sake. <laughs> It's a possibility, that's all I'm saying. Oh, the apple has fallen from the tree there, and it, like, <laughs> far from the fucking tree. The, the apple fell into a truck, and it was transported to outer Mongolia. That's how far the apple fell from the tree there. Jesus. <laughs> like, Will Smith. Will, no, that was really bad. Uh... <laughs> Will Smith is like charismatic. I, I wouldn't say he's like a great actor or anything, but he's got like he, he, he's charisma personified as a man, and he can he can just smash out a line and people are like, "Yep, yeah, Will Smith said that. That's fine. I'm down with that." But Jaden has just gone somewhere else. He's been too overprivileged. That's what his problem is. Oh yeah, everything's been handed to him. He hasn't had to work for it, so it just ends up being weird. He made a song about Goku though. Yeah, if only that would redeem him. <laughs> <laughs> um, Jason Bateman's directing Superworld. What is this? What's Superworld? It's, it's a thing, a comment about where everyone in the world has superpowers except one guy. Oh. Is there too much super superhero stuff? Yeah. <laughs> We've got to know in a year. <laughs> I, I think it's like a it's just another genre now isn't it it's not like yeah. there's so many there's so many different things you can do with it and I don't know I think if it keeps selling they're going to keep making it <laughs> that's the way it is will burst eventually yeah the bitcoin bubble like in that right for example westerns were big weren't they back in the day like in yeah. 1952 a third of the entire Hollywood film production was westerns yeah you know and then that slowly faded away yeah. by about 1960 so it'll happen with this true we can only pray <laughs> but what's the next trend? That's the question. Westerns again, mate. Vampires Superhero. again. German pornography. Oh, yes. No subtitles. <laughs> <laughs> Medium uh, production value and the uh, all the oscars just to go back to jason bateman there he uh he directed a load of ozark didn't he uh and he wrote some of it as well if i remember if you ever seen ozark it is a far that, cry from as usual the netflix yeah show. yeah yeah it's sort of like breaking bad a little bit less less sort of out there than breaking bad was it's more sort of grounded but mm. uh yeah definitely different from his uh from his normal shit that he's done i'm interested to see i do i do love jason bateman to be yeah. fair martin scorsese though he's made a deal with Apple, honey. Yeah, old Stephen Billy Bob Gates. <laughs> oh God, why? Why would he do it? I don't That's know. the question. He's I just, thought it was going to go with Netflix, to be honest, because the Irishman and all that. But it seems like he's teaming up with Apple to drive their streaming shit. I think he's just at the age where he's like, fuck it, <laughs> and uh, just do whatever now. Yeah, definitely. Judd Apatow, 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 directing George Carlin documentary. What's this about? You don't know George Carlin? No. Oh, wonderful, wonderful stand-up comedian, mate. Yeah? Yeah. 
dead. You're dead. Nice. <laughs> was he was um, he too good at comedy and they had to kill him? No, he got fired from DC and they took him out back. Just put a bullet in him. <laughs> Shit. And the last bit of news before we go into a big pineapple of a week. Antonio Banderas has COVID. Oh no. Is he gonna die? Place your bets now. Oh f- be all uh, right. He's old though, he's sixty. He's not old old, but Puss in boots, isn't he? Zorro, mate. He's in that one Expendables. Yeah. He is, he is. He's good. He's the only redeeming factor in that film. So Expendables 3? Nah, mate, Chuck, Chuck Norris is in it. That's, that's all you need. I'm not a Chuck Norris fan. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm not a Chuck Norris fan, but I'm a fan of the, the sort of the ethos the that is the myth of Chuck Norris. That's what I'm a fan of. <laughs> not the person, but the, the yeah, the, the myth that surrounds him. But yeah, Antonio, rest in peace. Um... <laughs> Shall we get on to a big pineapple? The big pineapple of this week is top five gaming villains, antagonists, baddies, poo-poo brains. So, which, what order do you want to do us in? Well, let's let our guest, you know, the revered director, Paul W.S. Anderson. It's true, it's true, thank you. Go for Fine. it. Fine, somebody sure. recognises my work. So, what is your fifth favourite villain uh, on games? My boy, Bowser. Uh, an icon of the a bygone era, and st- still now a, a, a villain that's retained his sort of his villainy status for nearly thirty years. That pop uh, status is very much still there, isn't it? It is. It is. So I think that needs to be recognised. And everybody knows who Bowser is. Like you're just you're just aware of Bowser. I think you're born with the knowledge of him now. Still remember back in the N64 days with his ah 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 laugh. You ran up the infinite staircase and threw him off the edge. Oh mate, yeah. And him kidnapping. I'm doing air quotes here. Kidnapping Peach on on the reg, mm. um, and yeah, she. Uh, I don't think she had a problem with that. She was she was okay. Peach uh, is a real villain of Mario. Yeah, yeah. Playing them two boys. Yeah, she is Peach. offering him cake. Yeah, having children with Bowser. <laughs> One kid, Bowser. I think the rest are he adopted or some shit. Weird though. Yeah. Oh no. <laughs> yeah. Not not great. I don't imagine that. Yeah. No. Disturbing. <laughs> but yeah, number five. Is Bowser. Nice. Fine choice. I'll let you go next, Mr. Pineapple. No, you go next. Whoa. All right. My number fifth. Number fifth. Yeah. <laughs> number five. It's got old Pyramid Head from the Silent Hill games and that. Oh, he was in my special mentions. You know, is the embodiment of sexual frustration in the games? Because the games have fucked, aren't they? And, you know, he's, he's just iconic in here with his big pyramid head and his massive penis sword. Yeah, yeah. And he's just one of them good old classic stalker game villains who yeah. keep following you. You know, I could have chose I could have chose many for this for this one. Anyone out of the Resident Evil franchise I could have chose, but, you know, I went with Pyramid Head for the, the following big giant sword. And he's not... He's not from Resident <laughs> Evil either. No. Sam Hill. <laughs> <laughs> I just Man, I could because Resident Evil's very much ah, the the it. sister the sister series to yeah. Silent Hill and uh, yeah is I don't find him that scary he's just more cool he just looks more cool you know yeah and he's he's probably the only like crossover to movie where they actually made him look pretty um, on point and decent I mean that that films that films a film isn't it. <laughs> Okay, just Sean weirdly Bean. enough, I think it could have been worse. <laughs> Sean, Sean Bean in that film, what was the point? What was yeah. the point in Sean, Sean Bean existing in that so film? So he could run through school corridors <laughs> shouting names and shit. Sean! <laughs> Uh, but yeah, no, Pyramid Head's a good shout. Um, and he's a, a villain that's so hard, he had to kill himself in the end. Yeah, yeah. That game's good. Yeah. I mean, he's in he's in most of the games, but, you know. Two most was, prominently. Was he going to be in Silent Hills? Who knows? Who knows? But yeah, Pyramid Head, what's your number five? Me? Annapole. I've gone for a guy from one of my favourite games of all time. It's Edgar Ross. Ah, from Red, ah, from Red, Red Dead, Dead Redemption. Redemption. He's pretty much the opposite of what John Marston is. Mm. And, he's an absolute arsehole. You know, he's just a nasty fucking weaselly prick. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he, he uses people to for his own means. He seems to take pleasure in it, weirdly. Mm. You know, and he pretty much just embodies the themes of the game, you know, industrialism and, you know, the encroaching bureaucracy, which is taking over the Wild West. And I think that's just a perfect foil, you know, for John. And don't even get me started on the end of the game where I get sad. 
He's a, he's a good puppeteer, though, isn't he? Yes, yeah. You know, he, he's just an evil cunt. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Killed your boy, John. He did, he did. You know, he's briefly in uh, Red Dead 2, if my memory's not yeah. his shit. He is, is yeah. again. You know, I just want to stab him to death if he wasn't already shot by my son. I was going to say, you kill him anyway, don't you? <laughs> yeah, while he's <laughs> fishing. Yeah. You know, um, I think he just embodies the things really well of the game, and he's just a good villain. Mm. You know, he doesn't have... He's got multiple in ulterior motives, you know, but he, he's not one of the kind of villains who wants to take over the world or whatever. Represents a passing of time. You know, in the game I just have, well. have, have a lot of time for him and when he dies. Yeah. Especially when he dies. Bastard. What a douche canoe. Douche canoe. Douche canoe. Nice. <laughs> yeah, what's your, what's your fourth one then? My fourth one? Yes, Paul. M- my fourth one has to be a boy, Handsome Jack. From Borderlands 3. Ah, I thought you'd uh, pop up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think he has to. Um, it was a, a brilliant antagonist, and I think it only, uh, it only like it, normally I sort of don't care about like villains' speeches and stuff, but his were so off the off the wall insanity um that it was and it was really well written um and i like the thing where even though the game wasn't too good the pre-sequel where you sort of see they started off with good intentions and then you know he actually had some character development we don't often see antagonists in video mm. games and he ended up being a civ dick who imprisoned his daughter uh to siphon off her super magic energy but yeah handsome jack definitely number four yeah he's he's a um dramatic one isn't he a charismatic villain you yes. gotta love a charismatic villain but yeah handsome, handsome jack have you played any borderlands mr pineapple uh i've played very very tiny bit of two i believe yeah. with a, a, a friend at uni i did and i just played like half an hour with him that's all my knowledge of borderlands is from the half an hour yeah so he i do really know does make i do know that people thing. love the character just mentioned though it's because obviously you've got the four main protagonists but they're, they're kind of yeah, they're, yeah. well they're not mute but they're yeah they're sort of personality lessness yeah. uh, so you need a, yeah, a driving a force strong, yeah yeah. And I guess it, it, the game benefited from putting the old characters in and not having them kind of as mute yeah. as they were in the first one. But yeah, cool. Handsome Jack. That's a good shout. Thank you. What's your number four, Mr. Pineapple? You're next. Oh, yeah. I am, aren't I? Well, my number four <laughs> is... Amateur hour. Good old Dr. Robotnik. Or Eggman, if you want to call him that. Or also Sonic. on my special mentions list. Yeah, he's just, he's just a crazy motherfucker, isn't he? Yeah. <laughs> Big old fat guy that wants to catch a super fast hedgehog. And I just love his design. He looks, oh, he is a boss, isn't he? I was, I was going to put Bowser, but I had to, I had to go with Dr. Robotnik because he's just the worst. He's the most stupid, <laughs> like, guy to... If you're catching a hedgehog and then he just comes up with all these... Fuck me, that's loud. Is that in your room? <laughs> <laughs> Just wait until the ice cream van's passed. You get into my ice creams, mate. Where is it now? I think it's right outside my house. Fucking Jesus Christ. No, it's it's just down the road. I think we I think we're good to go. Yeah, but yeah, Doctor Robotnik comes up with all these convoluted methods to fucking catch a killer hedgehog. I don't know. Maybe Jim Carrey's good as him as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Have you, no, no, have, Jim. Yeah, Jim. Jim did it. He brought his own. It? Yeah, 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 yeah. As far as video game movies goes, it wasn't that bad. Yeah, and Jim Carrey's obviously like like someone shoved five Duracells up his ass and told him just go and act <laughs> <laughs> so yeah no he does it he does it well i don't think he does it like exactly like how you see dr robotnik or how you imagine him on the screen but it's definitely uh, uh, his own version of him and i think it works but yeah he's such a cartoonish wild character isn't he? i love him yes yeah who's your number four mr pineapple in at number four i've got my boys pinky blinky pinky and clyde the pac-man ghosts Oh, okay. Um, Pac-Man Bast, you know. <laughs> they have no backstory or any of this, you know, in this game. They have a singular purpose, and that purpose is to just fuck up Pac-Man. <laughs> they, you know, they get killed, they get eaten by Pac-Man, they come straight back, they're like, I'm having none of that. Let's have you, you cunt. 
<laughs> you know? Eat um, it big and big time. They're just they're pop culture icons. They are relentless and driven. They're, they're here in my bedroom. There we go. Told like, you, didn't I? You know? Told you you'd have something to pull out for the episode. Oh. <laughs> um, <laughs> the, as um, the venerable director man just said, they are driven with the desire to just get Pac-Man. And sometimes that's all I need. To get Pac-Man. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It's all you need. <laughs> There's not much more I can say about them, just the, the, the fact simplicity that yeah. made them icons. Yeah, sometimes simplicity is better than a over, you know, convoluted backstory and, you know, all these plots and stuff. Just check All out. these plots. <laughs> 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 Who needs story? Who You've needs got that shit? No, I meant plots as in like traps to try and get people. Oh right, oh. okay, no. not as in narrative <laughs> words. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, Inky, Blinky, Pinky, and Clyde in nice. a number four. Very good. And your number three, Mister Director Man. Ah, my number three. Uh, terrified me as a child um, and this was, this was sort of, in a weird way uh, was my first introduction to sort of uh, how horror be put in a video game and when I say this I don't mean there's a horror video game I just mean the guy's creepy as fuck uh, and that would be Majora's Mask uh, mm. from uh, Majora's Mask <laughs> <laughs> uh, but th- you can say the moon as well because the moon was just terrifying oh, yeah. Absolutely, oh, just just constant like sadistic grin as it plummeted towards the earth. Um, but Skull Kid, the guy that wore it and all that, and every time he came up, it was always really trippy and weird. And it'd have this like weird clanky sound effect as he sort of tilted his head towards you and came at you and stuff. Uh, and he absolutely scared the crap out of me. <laughs> um, so I thought that it would be a very good uh, antagonist to include as my number Trez. Yeah, Majora's Mask. Yeah, it's a weird game, isn't it? Strange. Game. Game, but it was a, uh, it was good. I like that they, uh, they tried new shit in it. Uh, Don't you like die in it, or is that just a, a theory? Uh, there's a theory that the you're like the die in ocarina, and then this is like purgatory <laughs> that you're stuck in. Uh, oh right, yeah. Which, it yeah, to, yeah, yeah it has a lot of so. themes that sort of go along with that. But yeah, yeah, it was a it was a dark version of, <laughs> of like ocarina, I think. Yeah, especially when you're trying to sell it to kids as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think mean, I know a, I know a lot of adults who at that time adults who love Zelda as well, but yeah, yeah. that mask is creepy as fuck. Well, there weren't any really mature games out back then, were they? Like, games for sort of adults. It was all aimed at kids. There's probably a few, one or two, but uh, yeah, that was a sort of introduction to how, uh, how creepy the interactive media can be. Nice. Well, my number three is a good old... <laughs> Icon in the Final Fantasy franchise, Sifiroth. Oh, I thought you were going to go for Kefla then. No. Big boy, big boy sword, big boy silver hair, long hair. Big boy hair. pants. Big boy pants. Yeah, he's, he's a weird character, isn't he? He's obsessed with his mother, who's a fucking weird genetic... It's just, this game's weird, all right? It is, it is weird, <laughs> it is weird. I don't I'm not going to would... sit here and try, go, <laughs> try and explain it. I think when you're younger and you play through it, you don't realise how just messed up the plot is. Like, not in a bad way, I'm not saying that, but I mean, like, how, how just how in dark it all is. <laughs> and if you scrape away the sort of, like, you know, colourful uh, first sight things and all that. Uh, Is that uh, even even to this day? I still get confused to a plot of Final Fantasy VII. I think whoever wrote it does as well. I don't think anybody knows. Yeah, back it up. Gildareth though. Gildarif. Yeah, he did. Yeah, he's just cool as well, isn't he? I don't know how he carries that sword though. Must be a very heavy sword. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I've noticed mine. You know, I've got Pyramid Head, who's got a very big sword and very big head. I've got Sifroth, who's got a very big sword and very long hair. I don't know where the uh, the attraction is for me, but uh, yeah, I feel like he's the outstanding, iconic thing about Final Fantasy as a franchise. Yeah. I think Seven is as well. That's a standout game for most people. Um, and for general audiences, I feel like they've seen seen a picture of either Sifroth or Cloud, but I feel like Sifroth is more the iconic staple character, and he's yeah. just he's just cool as fuck. True that. Indeed. What about you, Mr. Pineapple? Prepare for trouble. Oh, no. And make it double. It's Team Rocket. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh, I boy. mean, they're inept, aren't they? Um, they try. They, they do try. And that's all we can ask for from a villain, isn't it? You know, yeah. they want to get all the Pokemon. They're all going to be mine. Yes. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of them. I want to know how they, you know, who does their recruitment drives. Why do you want to join? Yeah, I want to join. The Nazis of the Pokemon universe. Yeah, you know. Um, Giovanni, isn't it? Old yeah. G- big boy Giovanni. He's a, he's a bad boy. He is. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, they're much like uh, Edgar Ross. They're pretty much the opposite of the, the guys you're playing, as you know. They don't particularly love Pokemon as such. They just need them. Yep. And as I said, they're world domination. World domination, mate. Yeah. <laughs> Catch gonna them all. all. They're going to get all the Pokemon and take over the world. Right. Because there's no adults, is there? They've, uh, they're all dead. <laughs> Because of Pokemon. Uh, World War Three happened. Yeah. And all the normal animals got turned into Pokemon through mm-hmm. radiation. radiation. And then Professor Oak banged Dash's mom. Mr. Mime watched. Yep. Nice. And then Team Rocket were made. <laughs> <laughs> that is the exact sequence of events. <laughs> it's the origin story. <laughs> yeah, I just love them. They're, they're just bastards. Petty, you know. Who's bastards. your favourite? Oh, um, I don't know. Who's your favourite? And I'll say that one. The trans one. Ah, uh, yeah, same. Yeah. <laughs> Meow. Meowth is a big Meowth. boy, isn't he? Yeah, it's, it's just good stuff. Nice. And, you know, very much in popular culture still. Oh, yeah, definitely. You know, never going to leave, really. I mean, they don't die. They, they're they really, don't age. They're, they're really, immortal. They're resilient immortal. to explosions. Yeah. It must be the R. It's some kind of protection symbol. I think it's because we become a star every time they disappear. Brings them back. Reincarnated as themselves. Yeah. <laughs> each time. Unless they die every time and they're just clones. Whoa. Maybe there's more to this Pokemon series than I thought. Yeah, and there's just corpses. Because it happened every episode, so there's corpses of Jesse and James and Meowth littered throughout the Pokemon uh, Kanto region. Oh, yeah, that's brilliant. Yeah, you know, I, I like Team Rocket a lot. They're funny yeah. as well. They're funny. They are funny. You know, prefer. in both the games and the uh, the anime. You know, it's good, good, good shit. So, we're on to number two. Numero dos. Numero dos. As the What's Spanish your... would say. Yes. Mine... My number two is the boy himself, the antagonist of a game that I hold very dear to my heart, uh, and I thought was just the absolute tits when it came out. My number two is Liquid Snake. I know, I knew it. I didn't want to, <laughs> didn't want to say it before you said it. I was like, oh, here we go. Uh, the blonde twin brother of the person that you play as, uh, Solid Snake, and the I remember going throughout the game and you just hearing his like over the top British accent. Uh, <laughs> just just badgering you throughout the game and then you've the final fight you have with him on the top of the destroyed metal gear uh will stay in my memory for many many a moon to come uh yeah and he was just over the top it was japanese as all hell uh and i loved it <laughs> it's a very confusing game as well isn't it oh it is it is there's many different versions of different of the same characters and just yeah. Yeah. Because who's in no, the fifth one? Yeah. Is Liquid in that? No, also, uh, no, because that's set before. That's when, like, Big Boss was still about. Yeah. Isn't there a kid version of him, though? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 There's, yeah. Sort of, there's sort of Lord of the Flies thing going on with them in that one. Surprised you didn't choose uh, Psycho Mantis. I was going to go with Psycho Mantis, but I wanted a more all encompassing villain. And I think the fight, even though when I was explaining the Liquid, Psycho Mantis did pop into my head. Excuse the. Uh, Phrase there, but yeah, uh, I, th- I thought that the final fight, on, like I said, on top of the, the burnt out Rex, was more iconic to me than. But Psycho Mantis did have that whole reading your memory card thing, which blew my fucking mind. Uh, <laughs> again, pardon the phrase. Uh, as a kid, like that was just fucking awesome. And you had to plug your controller port into controller port two, and I was like, "What the hell's going on? <laughs> Why would that work? Uh, what what kind of jank is this?" And I loved it. Yeah. Good old Hideo Kojima. Yeah, man. What about Vamp, though? He uh, licks cum off his knife, doesn't he? He fucking does, mate. <laughs> My number two. Resident Evil's a franchise, isn't it? It is. It is. <laughs> it's, in every sense of the word, it is, in fact, franchise. <laughs> and this character scared the shit out of me when I was a kid. Claire Redfield. You know? No, <laughs> I don't know. I don't even know how old I was, but I had nightmares of this character. 
and she only appeared in the the remake of the first game and that character is Lisa Trevor the daughter of a family that was working with Umbrella doing uh, experiments and such and they experimented on his daughter Lisa who then went a bit crazy because she was a zombie person, this woman. And she was a zombie person. She uh, ripped her mum's face off, didn't she? And tied it to her head. Tied it? Sewn it to her skull. Yeah. 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 It's like they were sat around in the board meeting, like, how can we make this character just as, as absolutely messed up as humanly possible? And like, we just have a rip her mum's face off. And like, yeah. yeah, yeah, sure. We'll and have her scream mother all the time and yeah. walk around with her arms while her hands bound together by a brick and uh, and she's a she's another stalker character not so much like throughout the whole game she only appears i think twice in the actual the actual game but it's you know yeah. if you played the original resident evil and you think you know what's going to happen in the game and then you get to a cabin in the woods and you get smacked over the head suddenly by a weird horrible sounding woman with oh i hate it mate <laughs> <laughs> and you know she's around because you can hear the chains scrape on the floor and you're like, oh great, this unkillable fucking horrible woman is chasing me throughout the whole game. Let's have nightmares. Just like real life. Yeah. And my brother made me play them parts because he was too scared to play them. What a fucking pussy bitch. <laughs> uh, and he yeah, was he's, much he's... older than me. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, he... Uh... He sounds like such a scaredy cat, that guy. Yeah, motherfucker. But yeah, that's my, my number two. Lisa Trevor, fucking bitch. Who's your second Mr. Pineapple? Well, mine is one that's already been said by one of you two guys. In oh, Hollywood. shiggity shit. Can you guess who it is? It's Dr. Robotnik, of course. Oh. <laughs> Uh, you know this pony boy about me. I'm a major fan of the the Sonic games, the yep. the fucking cartoons, the everything. I've got Sonic curtains in my bedroom. You have because I'm not 26. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, Eggman, Robotnik, however you wish to call him, he's just much like uh, Bowser. You know, an icon in the platforming villainy world. You know, from his his looks to his schemes which often fail mm. because what's the best way to catch a really fast hedgehog put some balls on some chains mate and just swing them at him some yeah. really <laughs> slow wrecking balls yeah just, i just need the most convoluted myth. he could do so much with his intelligence he could do so much for the benefit of That's humanity but no yeah, yeah. Catch, catch a hedgehog. That is my life goal. <laughs> he has intentions of world domination, but <laughs> that world domination often it gets pushed to the to the side with his thoughts of no, I've got to fuck up this hedgehog. <laughs> <laughs> I need, I need to fuck him up, you know. And what makes him the just you know the second overall greatest antagonist of all time is just this hatred for fluffy creatures and the fact that they power most of his fucking contraptions. It's just <laughs> glorious. Glorious! What an what an absolute bastard of a man, <laughs> you know. And as you said earlier, his look is just—it's amazing. I love I love this man so much. He's he's funny. He's stupid, but so incredibly smart. He's got so many resources just at hand all the time. Yeah. yeah. And he likes stealing big big jewels from Maybe different it's animals. Compensation for the lack of his own big jewels. Maybe. Oh. Maybe. Oh, got it there, haven't we? He's just—he's a lad. You you probably knew we were going to be on the list, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, I did. Should we do some on, honourable mentions before we get to the top spot? Indeed, you out there, yeah. indeed. So, who have you got, Paul? Uh, my first honourable mention is Andrew Ryan from Bioshock. He had a you know, sort of a Lovecraftian, really sort of droll voice to him, and uh, he ends up uh, having you kill him by repeating the thing that activates you psychically to obey his commands by saying, would you kindly, and ask you to, would you kindly beat him to death with a golf club? And if that ain't the most ballish shit I've ever heard, then I ain't heard no ballish shit. <laughs> yeah, Andrew Ryan. Uh, I also had... Pyramid Head and Dr. Robotnik, but I've got one more. But I'll let you two say some honorable mentions first. Um, I didn't really do any because I didn't think we were doing this, but uh, we always do my this head. every time. Shut your mouth. I haven't even been here and I knew about that. See? <laughs> He's a professional compared to you. I am a uh, professional. Off the top of my head, I'm going to go with Joker from the Arkham games. Fine okay. choice. Okay, good. Good. Mark Hamill as well. Mark Hamill's Mark Joker. Mark And I think, in my opinion, it's the best joker from everything so 
kaboom and he dies he does die and that was if, a that was a ballsy move you know if you complete the game if you remember at the start of the game he's in the incinerator mm. if you complete the game and load new game plus and start again uh there's a different scene where he wakes up in the incinerator and jumps towards the camera that's cool yeah yeah i thought that was cool that's my fact there anyway <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah and some of the people are good aren't they <laughs> yeah that's true Far Cry has some <laughs> villains that people like don't you be doing this he's on my list <laughs> <laughs> but no I'll let Mr Pineapple go and I'll think of some more I'll get his notes out uh, my boy G-Man from Half-Life very good choice um, he was he was up there um, Balder from that game that you borrowed me oh, oh yeah Balder is yeah. yeah God of War yeah um and of course Zoran Lazarevic and Harry Flynn from Uncharted 2 the greatest game ever made. Wow. <laughs> high praise. High praise there. Yeah, they're just another few, you know. Mewtwo. Mewtwo. He's a bit. He's there, isn't he? Yeah. <laughs> and, oh, and another big one was uh, my boy Tenpenny, you know, Officer. Officer Tenpenny. Just a pure bastard. Yeah, he Pretty was. Pretty much a modern, day, a modern day Edgar Ross. A modern day cunt. Yes. And, oh, you know, of course, everyone you play against on Mario Kart ever. Nice. And uh, Pants Bastard. That guy from Fable. Just going to chill that out, right? uh, Jack of Blades. Yeah, he's cool. Yeah, he was good. He was good. Uh, yeah. Uh, he had a really cool voice, which I think is always good for a villain. You need a good voice. Some British guy, just do the voice for him. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Any British guy will do. Yep. Uh, I also had uh, Vas Montenegro from Far Cry 3 played by Michael Mando, uh, who was so good. Uh, he was only meant to have a bit part in it, but he became the poster child for the game. Um, nice. Because he, does he die like halfway through the game? Yeah, pretty much. Three quarters, I think. But yeah, you end up facing his sister, I think. Uh, yeah. But yeah, he did uh, He did really, really well. Uh, obviously, worthy of a special mention from myself. Nice. Shall we get to the top spot? I'm going to have to go and slash real quick, man, because I'm an Fuck old man. Fucking no. hell. I know. I'm you so... are an old man, aren't you? Yeah. You're keeping them in suspense, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> so, after Mr. Pineapple's piss, number one game villain of all time, in our opinions. Go on, Paul. Who is My it? number one game villain of all time, and the reason I've chosen this, it may seem slightly odd, but the reason I've chosen this particular villain was because they were funny, uh, and they came out of left field in a game that was not meant to be as popular as it ended up being. I spawned countless memes, I spawned a sequel with some high-end voice actors in it, all from a game that was just meant to be an ad on to a pack of Valve games that you got. So my number one is GLaDOS from the Portal series just because of how left field she came out of and how sharp her dialogue was. And you get to put her in a potato in number two. <laughs> you get to put her in a potato. Yep, she lives as a science experiment. You know the thing where you can power a light bulb with a potato? Oh, She's yeah. like dying and you need her core because White was taking over the, the complex. So you need to put her core in something and you put it in a potato. And every time she gets really angry, it, she loses power and just shuts down because she's being powered by a potato. Greatest villain of all time. <laughs> Greatest villain of all time. <laughs> <laughs> and just you kind of feel sorry for her she's sort of tapped in a way uh as in like she's mental but like <laughs> she, she she screams that she just wants company but she doesn't know how to have company she just knows how to test and uh you just sort of feel bad for her in a way, in a way, which is weird for a villain. You don't normally feel bad for them, so. Yeah, when I was looking at other lists online, she was the number one in many lists. I just can that. see why, I can see why. So, she is a good villain. She is a good villain. I just don't like Portal. Well, you are dead to me, sir. <laughs> <laughs> is it because you can't do it? I've completed it. Oh, right. I'm not you. But I don't complete games, that's true. But yeah, Gladys. 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 You say Gladys. <laughs> yeah, yep. Gladys. That's someone I work with. A very, very different type of villain. <laughs> Hello, Sonny. <laughs> Not on Gl it today. Gladys sells you mouldy bacon sandwiches at a <laughs> burger shop. <laughs> Greatest villain of all time. Gladys. Um, <laughs> Smash Bros intro. Oh god. Mine, I'm sure all of you, all of you can guess. I mean, <laughs> Resident Evil's a franchise, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I knew this was coming. <laughs> I was wondering, I was like, why Why isn't this particular uh, suave villain been, <laughs> been in this number four spot? We spoke about mad scientists. We did. <laughs> 
And this guy is a genie. <laughs> he's you know, a G. Did some spy espionage shiz in the first game. And then went on to uh, inject himself with a zombie virus. Just for laughing at it. He wanted power. And I mean, then, he, was, uh, he was dying. And that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, he um, made a man punch a boulder. I'm obviously talking about Albert Wesker, the greatest, the greatest villain of all time. He's a, oh, he's, I mean, you just can't get any more over the top. I'm a villain world domination, can you? Really? He wants global saturation. Global <gasps> saturation. <laughs> <laughs> and he's got. You know, his he's slick back hair and his sunglasses that he wears inside. His Matrix coat. His Matrix coat, yeah. His big long trench motherfucker. His and Joe his, Valentine. Yeah, and he disguised himself as a star's police officer, captain, who knows. And shouted, Chris, this way! Yeah, iconic. He's just, he's just an all-round amazing guy, isn't he? <laughs> And a massive dick. Oh, yeah, massive. He just literally wants to rule the world by killing everyone. And him being the only person alive, I guess, with his super... He's even got super speed and super strength, and it's just cool as fuck. I mean, he can't catch two rocket rockets at once, but he can catch one. Can, sure. And that's all. And if it explodes in his face, like, an inch away, then he's fine. But if he gets two rockets in his face, then, he, then he's dead. That's how cutscenes work. <laughs> But yeah, Albert Wesker. He's got a son, but we don't talk about him because, you know, franchise went off over rails a bit, didn't it? Went all, it went all Nick Cage on us. Yeah, it, definitely. I mean, they ruined him in your film, Mr. Paul W.S. Anderson. Look, I work with what I'm giving, all right? <laughs> and you're giving a very buff man who's yep. trying to play a very skinny man. Yep, that's what I did. And he gets killed by a door in your franchise. So. Well, you know, it's I wanted him to die in the most, like, Tyrion Lannister way ever. <laughs> so I just had him crushed to death by a door, which seemed like it would work. Yeah. So, uh, yep, just go and sleep on my bed of money, Mia Djokovic now. <laughs> but yeah, he's just he's just a fucking G. Best best video game character of all time as well. Just putting that out there. Your number one, Mr. Final Four. Well mine was a toss up for between the one and two spots on mine, you know. And it's it was, Albert Wesker. If it if it was a different day, you know, it might have been the opposite way around. Uh but in at in at number one is uh he's just a man who, you know, he's he's got a military force. He's got family troubles, especially with his son and grandson. He likes to have tournaments to draw people out. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, he's old, yeah. but he's buff as fuck. He is. He's got magnificent hair. He wears wooden sandals. He can make electricity with his hands sometimes for a man who's immortal. A uh, moustache as well. Yeah, and it's my boy Heihachi Mishima. Yeah, from, there he is. From Tekken. There he is. There he is. The, Tekken is a big part of my life, as the pony knows. It has been since childhood. This man made me stress a lot. <laughs> <laughs> he's, you know, he's, he's number one for me because he is a bastard in yep. game, you know, to everyone. But also he's a bastard to be because he's very overpowered and annoying. You know, he's got no qualms in chucking his son into a volcano. <laughs> Um, no qualms, mate. <laughs> no qualms. He'll just invade the Soul Calibur universe and just fuck everyone up. Attached his son and granddad and grandson to a rocket. Yep. Buy them in space. He he don't like the devil gene. Doesn't mad mad against that. Tried to kill his wife. Yep. Killed his wife actually. He's just awesome. He beats the shit out <laughs> of Akuma in Tekken Seven from that game series. He's just an overall badass. His moveset's fucking awesome. He just bites an axe into pieces in the anime. He's just awesome. And I love him. He's just evil. He's just pure, pure evil. But not that evil that he likes the devil gene. But he did try and become immortal by using an ogre. It all went wrong in Tekken 3 for him, mate. Did it? Yeah. He survived getting thrown into a volcano. Mm. He did. In Tekken 1. He's just a badass. And he's got, like, illegitimate sons and shit. What more do you want from a villain? Legitimate sons. Damn. He has those. He has those as well. He does, but you don't like him. He doesn't, is not. Is this Jackie right. Chan? No, no, it's not Jackie Chan, no. <laughs> Though there is a character in Tekken based on Jackie Chan. Oh, yeah. Law. Is it Law? No, Law's Bruce Lee. Oh, yeah, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. Lei Wu Long. Lei Wu Long, yes, yeah. God, I love Tekken. And I love Jackie Chan. What more do I need? <laughs> hey, Hachi. Fucking badass. Very nice. I cried playing Tekken 7. 
<laughs> Why? <laughs> so it's all coming out now. It's the end of the, you know, Mishima saga. He, he dies. For good. Does he, though? He's not coming back. Is he not? No. <laughs> no, just going to be about Jack. Nice. I don't like Jack. Well, mine dies and he's not come back yet, so... Yeah, no one cares about your own. Everyone thinks this is Albert Hachi, Wesker mate. is this the is best. This is Heihachi. Shut up. Shihachi's better. No, and Bison's better. Shihachi's oh. better from the Jungle Book. No. Yeah. That's just not right. <laughs> The Master Hands Bear from Smash Bros. You think about that? <laughs> Never played it. Never played it? No. My friends, you know. My friends. Nightmares Bear from Soul Calibur. There you go. Nightmares pretty cool. He is, isn't he? Kangaroo. Mr. Roger. <laughs> <laughs> do like Roger. What about Gone, No, The little dinosaur that's shit. Yeah. And fart on people, though. That's it, then, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> That concludes our big pineapple. Mm. And if... Quality villainy in our lists there. Such villainy. Much villainy, as the meme would say. Only one crossover as well, which I was surprised at. Yeah, I, well, I tried to pick a varied list. Yeah. I went with two Resident Evil characters because I'm on Mark, but... <laughs> <laughs> Shall we get on to the wrestling news, boys? Let's, let's do it, yeah. Wrestling. Oh. Are you a wrestling fan? I have, I know of the wrestling, and I have used to follow the wrestling very avidly back in the day because my friend was also a massive wrestling fan. Nice. I've been to some, uh, some wrestling shows, uh, 1PW, etc. I've been to 1PW shows. Yes, yes. I very much enjoyed them. I've met Ric Flair. You were at the 1PW show with Ric Flair? I was. I, I was, was at that show. Oh, hello. We've met before. <laughs> no. oh. uh, there was a guy that couldn't get in because he'd lost his ticket and he was dressed. He cut up a pool table to make a felt robe out of his... Um, so he could look like Ric Flair and then they ended up just letting him in anyway. <laughs> nice. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. So uh, I know of the wrestling. Well, let's kick it off with AEW <laughs> releasing a few folk, shall we? Who have they released, Mr. Pineapple? Uh, Jimmy Havoc, you know, got done for all that sexual abuse stuff. Who they yep. said mental health issues were that. He's gone. <laughs> mental health issues were that. Classic Jimmy. Also, that bitch who's in a relationship oh. with Will Ospreay, beat free. I ate them as a couple. Is it because you want to be in a relationship with Will Ospreay? No, I want to push him off a big ledge. It just do a backflip, mate, and land. No, it's it's too big. <laughs> oh, a ledge that's for sure going to cause damage. Right, Hopefully okay. Damage over twelve feet. It's ledge. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't. I'm glad she's gone. She's a shit wrestler anyway. Uh, and Sadie Gibbs is gone, which I'm a bit sad about. But you know, she's stuck in the UK because Corona. So ah, kind of right, make, okay. makes sense that one. She's a good worker though, so it's a shame. Uh, well, much better than B Priestley. Though. I don't know that much. Now it's next bit of wrestling news. Don't really understand it. Wrestlers respond to Logan Paul's open challenge. Yeah. I'm guessing this is Logan Paul's fight challenge because he is a bit of background on this. He's tried to fight, uh, I think it was an NBA star who then tried to murder his wife and then got put in prison and then deemed insanity. So he couldn't do that. <laughs> and then he tried to fight a, I think it was an NFL star as well, but then they've dropped out as well. Yeah, he put on Twitter or something um, 10 grand to any influencer who can beat me in a wrestling match. Oh, right, okay. So a bunch of wrestlers are like, when do you want me to kick shit out of you kind of thing and then New Jack was just like yeah I'll just murder you because you know he's famous for hurting people and trying mm. to kill them in the ring I'd like to see that because I don't like Logan Paul he's, he's, a, bit of a, he's a bit of a willy isn't he yeah I would love to see New Jack just stab him in the head with a knife he's a wrestling champion though Logan Paul. Yeah, but knife to the head's gonna. Yeah, <laughs> I guess I guess knife to the head. We should yeah. we should put we should put David Arquette up against him. That'd be that'd be fun. Yeah, but a lot of a lot of different type. Iron Sheep <laughs> responded. Just the crazy wow. old bastard that he is. Is he still it. alive? Yeah. <laughs> I, I... He must be about a thousand by now. <laughs> his, his Facebook um, is my one of my favorite things of all time. Nice. It's great. But... However, Darby Allen and. Priscilla Kelly are getting divorced, aren't they? Yeah, they're two wrestlers, and they're not going to be together anymore. Is Darby Allen the skull face guy? Yeah, the half face, hardcore type wrestler. And she's the wrestler who did the tampon spot. I don't know if you remember the tampon spot. I do not. It caused a big, big thing on the social medias and the wrestling community. What happened? She took a tampon out in in middle of a match and used it as some kind of weapon. Not all right with that. <laughs> nope. Nope. <laughs> 
as a submission, or did she just? Start I don't even remember. It was left splatting it. it just started swinging it around like a flail. <laughs> you know, oh, Jesus, wrestling man, and people, you know, wonder why we watch it. I wonder why we watch it. Have you got any more wrestling news? I've got one more, but I didn't I know do, if you had. I do. Um, Abyss, my boy mm. from TNA. You know, he was obviously signed on WWE as a producer, as I discussed way yeah. back when. And his character Joseph Park made an appearance with AJ Styles. Made me mark out because I have best of the best TNA DVD right next to me. <laughs> I'm a big fan. Oh, he's good. He's good. I don't know where it's going to lead to, but who knows? Did they have a rivalry with AJ in TNA? Oh, yeah. They had, my favorite TNA match is Abyss versus um, AJ Styles from TNA Lockdown 2005. Mm -hmm. Glorious, glorious match. But you've got to realize uh, the last time they tried to recreate a indie AJ match, it was just horrible with Nakamura and AJ. That's, and we've also got a few more matches added to SummerSlam. Oh. I said that the women, obviously, were they were against TBD, yeah. weren't they? And um, Sasha's a opponent has been revealed as Asuka. She's pulling double duty and facing both Sasha and Bailey for both titles oh, during boy. the night. So that could be fun. Is and she going to get them? I hope so. And we've got Mandy Rose versus Sonya Deville in a hair versus hair match. That will be <laughs> not good. <laughs> what? Hair versus hair? Versus hair. hair. you never seen a hair versus hair match? I have not. The loser gets their head shaved. Oh, oh yeah. right. I've seen okay. that shave your head match. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Kurt know. Angle and uh, Vince did one. Yeah. I thought you meant literally like... Not like a it... tug of war with the hair. <laughs> That'd be awesome. Obviously, they've got that, that wrestler who uses a hair as a weapon. So I thought oh, it'd be... yeah, Bianca Belair. Yeah. Yeah, and the Dominic Mysterio and Seth Rollins matches a street fight as well now. So, yeah. No match for AJ announced yet. But... Some uh, background information on that for you, Paul. Um, mm -hmm. Seth Rollins got Rey Mysterio's head... And popped his eye on a on the side of a ring like step. So I saw that. I saw that. Yeah, yeah. Wonder if he's got his eye back yet. Yeah, yeah he's got his eye back yet because he signed the contract. He's staying with him. Oh, he can, right, see, yeah, he can yeah. see again. Yeah. <laughs> oh boy. And now his his son's wrestling as well now. Yeah. If only Eddie Guerrero had won that ladder match to take custody of him. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, wrestling. And then we've got the uh, WWF referee debuts on AEW. Yes, Mike Chioda. He was one of the guys released, you know, when they did the big cut, the big COVID call, as yeah. I'm going to call it, even though they had so much money <laughs> that they didn't need to do this. Yeah, he, made, he um, refereed the main event of the latest uh, AEW show between uh, Chris Jericho and Orange Cassidy. Oh, no, right. This is a man who was with WWE for like 26 years. And they're just like, sin a bit, mate. Same like Jericho, though, isn't it? Yeah. But he's with AEW now. He's a big re referee name. Mm. You know. They've also got that referee who stole all that shit, haven't they? Oh. Mm. Yeah. Oh, Good time. And his brother Dave. Yeah. <laughs> Went on a crime spree. Stole lots of merchandise. Yeah. Um, and that's the end of the wrestling news. Sweet and short and short and sweet. Yeah, uh, so about, we will be watching SummerSlam on the twenty third, so next mm, week. Next Sunday. Should be yes. fun. Maybe we get to do it in person. Who knows? Who knows? Awareness. You got out. I'm not aware of anything. You're not aware of anything? Awareness? No, mate. Couldn't care less. Oh, wow. <laughs> no, I'd just like to shout out um, Grandad Dick, you know. Uh, we talked about his cat being ill and whatnot. And uh, she was the inaugural inductee to the Wonder Hour Hall of Fame. But she has sadly passed away now. Um, so, big love to our boy, GD. Tabby. You know. Peace. Rest in peace, Tabby. You very little fucker. I'll give a shout out to uh, my dad, Pony Senior, as no one calls him. It's his sixtieth. It's his sixtieth <laughs> birthday today. How many more do you reckon he's got left in him? Oh, oh shit. Probably like <laughs> at least five, but who knows? He's got diabetes, so he might go away as same way as Kamala. Uh, oh, Kamala. Kamala. Yeah. Mm, wow. <laughs> Happy birthday, Dad. Um, I know your dad. You do. <laughs> I do. He had a party last night. He did. Did he get, did he get wrecked? Yeah. He has a racist family. Oh. <laughs> but we won't get into that. We won't get into that. <laughs> Is there any awareness or shout out you want to give Paul before we sign off? No, nothing from myself. Um, uh, no. You don't want to shout out anyone? Uh, big it up to uh, boy Paul W S Anderson. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you. <laughs> yeah. Don't forget your wife, mate. Mia. Mia. Yeah. 
want to thank my family and friends for allowing me to live this long. Mum for giving birth and uh, congratulations on my sister getting a house. Oh, she got a house. She got a house. Yeah, They're expensive. They are, they are. She bought one. You didn't even buy it with all your film millions. Jesus. Nope. Oh, shame. What's the, what's the, give what's the point if I give it if I give her the ability to do that? She wouldn't have earned it herself. She's a pharmacist anyway. She's got enough money. Does she steal other drugs? Uh, no. For <laughs> you. <laughs> Good, good answer. <laughs> well, I think there's only one more thing left to do. Uh, fuck you, Seaton. Fucking ginger prick. Yeah, don't know if you listen this far into the episodes, but at the end we do say fuck you, Seaton, and you've got to say it, so say it. Fuck you, Seaton. Yes. What a lad. I mean, even he said it to himself on the 25th episode, so, you know, I guess, I guess that's everything. All right. Stay fresh. Stay fresh. Stay frosty. Oh my. Take a ride on so many ponies. Take a ride on so many ponies. Take a ride on so many ponies. Mr. Pineapple, oh yeah. It's Mr. Pineapple's Wonder Hour.